Hi, it's me, Vicky Marie. Oof, so how are we all? We've had a little break. Have we assimilated everything uh, from the first to from the morning? I think there's, it, we've been up and down and, well, I've been crying and then, oh. Anyway, right, <clears throat> some information. So this picture, the photo that you can see here, uh, that you can see here on your screen. This is the photo from outside um, the county court or whatever it is, county hall. So the people that I know that are there, this is what the message, they sent me this photo because I asked are there a lot of police there? You know, because I just had these sort of visions of people like trying to storm the building or whatever, I don't know. I've always, but my son tells me I'm dramatic, I probably am. Uh, but anyway, no, this is very tranquil scene. You know, there's not loads of people hanging around. Uh, hi all. So actually, let me say hello to everyone again. Hi, Princess. Hi, Simple Life Dates. Hi, Silver Moon Warrior. Hope you enjoyed your bike ride. You might, like uh, someone just said, you might well need another bike ride after the end of this inquest. Uh, hi, Angela B. Yes, uh, the pathologist should know if they bruise it, but she didn't mention that, or I couldn't see that she did. Uh, hi, Desi again. Hi, Trish. Hi, Seahorse Crazy. Thank you, Heather, for the Kofi, the coffee. Heather bought me a coffee. I don't know if she's here on chat. Hi, Vicky. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Sarah. Yeah, thank God for dogs. Dogs always cheer you up, don't they? Hi, Foundry. Hi, Rachel. Hi Desi, hi the other, another Rachel, Trish, uh, Desi, I might have said hello to Desi already, sorry if I have already, um, there was somebody, Phyllis, hi Phyllis, so hi all, thank you for coming back and being, oh, sorry the dog's barking, hi Annie, Shh. hi Annie, hi Marie, hi Pauline again, hi Wendy again, Mia, hi uh, Heather, oh, thank you. Um, yeah, all hit the like if you don't mind, that would be great. So, yeah, this is the scene, or this was the scene at lunchtime, very quiet, very tranquil. And my chatter, hi, Tooty Bird. I love the names that come up on it, they're great, aren't they? Uh, this is the message that my uh, chatters who are there have sent me, the messages they've sent me. So, <coughs> So I'd asked, are there a lot of police and people hanging around? And she said, no, there's just two police at the end of the street, which you can see there. So that literally is a scene or was a scene at lunchtime. She said, there's a couple of security at the entrance and the reporters were coming out to report. Uh, she said they had to, they've been told to go back at 1.45. So they will be back in there now, but I don't think. No, it hasn't started again yet. Or there's nothing coming up, any information. So she said, I've got to be back. At, Hi, Samantha. Hi, RM42. Thank you, Phyllis, for saying I look beautiful. Thank you. Hi, Trish. Um, I've got to be back in there at 1.45. Now, I know you'll be interested in uh, Sue, Ernie and Louise. Who's Sue? I think she means uh, Nicola's mum, Dot, not Sue. So, Sue, Ernie and Louise, but I think by Sue she means Dot, she's got a name wrong, are sat together. Louise is sat next to Paul, but they have not spoken or even acknowledged each other from what I've seen. So that was a question that when I sent my list of questions... <laughs> Off. That's what I was very interested in knowing is what is the relationship between Dot and Ernie and Louise and Paul? And um, they, they haven't even acknowledged each other. So it sounds like you've got Dot and Ernie, then Louise, then Paul. And they're all sat together because that's where the family is sitting. But Paul and Louise have not acknowledged each other or Paul and the rest of the family have not acknowledged each other. So that's interesting, isn't it? That's what I'm very intrigued with is 
what is their family relationship you know what is their fa I, I think there's a division there in that family and no uh, vicky it doesn't seem like anybody's there for paul's support but we don't know there may be in the uh, in the gallery there are people but um so let me tell you what else she says there's only about 31 general public people there only around about 31 people there it's very quiet you know there was supposed to be at capacity weren't there 70 70 capacity um but no they're not there was only th maybe some people can't get there maybe some people will be there for the afternoon session or maybe they can't get there for today or they'll be there tomorrow um but well Catherine, and we've read that it's 16 today and four tomorrow but you know we'll see um she said there's only 31 of the general public there it's very quiet there's some mic um bad microphone quality so sometimes it can't catch what's being said so she said so far we've had a police diving expert the pathologist and some other man who i didn't catch his occupation that'll be the self-proclaimed um world leading expert in drowning deaths that we were talking about clothing briefly but once expelled she would have sunk experts said this morning cold shock would have caused almost instant death or within 30 seconds so this uh, new expert is saying that um there would have been a brief buoyancy from the clothing but that once that was expelled she would have sunk and that's generally what's been said isn't it um, that if a body goes into the water, or a lot not body goes into the water, but if a person <coughs> goes into the water, ah, finally it's come up. Inquest resumes. Good. Because I do like these updates. I think they've been very good. Uh, we are now hearing from former police dive supervisor, Sergeant Lorna Dennison Wilkins. Sergeant Dennison Wilkins received a doctorate after completing a thesis relating to human body movements in island inland waterways she is an expert on what happens to a body after a person dies by drowning so she says that although the clothing mickey was wearing would have given some initial buoyancy the air bubbles would have been removed by movement and mickey's body would have sunk the sergeant agrees that people can drown in relatively shallow water if the temperature is cold and she says that 44% of fatalities in water occur when someone had no intention of entering the water, i.e. if they fell in accidentally. Well, that's fair enough. That sounds likely. It's just, you know, how do you prove that she fell in accidentally? This is my thing. Uh, didn't the other guy say she would float? The police expert, the, he said she would float. And now this lady is saying, which is what we had thought, that um, when people drown, they go straight down to the bottom. And it all comes back to the same thing. Why was she not found? You know, that, that's it as far as I'm concerned. And for any of you... Um, no there was no there was no water there was no alcohol silver moon warrior that she had no alcohol in her blood no so she definitely <laughs> hi beverly no it's not looking brilliant but we've still got a long way to go ah you know nick that makes sense i wonder if that's what happened that a lot of the saint michael's villagers applied for the public seats because i i think the way they decided who got the seats it must be locality because anyone i know who was awarded a seat was it was well, certainly in the lancashire area but um anyway uh 
so yeah no there was no alcohol whatsoever in her system okay. so that is is not disputed so yeah the policeman said that she would float and now this expert is saying that she would sink so okay let's see let's see well we'll just wait until all the experts come out i suppose i just want something i wanted to look for then because i was thinking right first of all i want to try and take this comment off i don't know why ah there you go it's gone <laughs> um i only wanted to put it up for a while i didn't want it to be put there forever so let's see if there's any update because if not i'm going to look to see if i can Ah, right, let's have a look at this. So, Dr. Adley, the coroner, has described Nikki as a holiday swimmer, right? He asks, what would it be like to try and swim against a... Water, yeah, well, obviously, she wasn't a professional swimmer. What does it mean by a holiday swimmer? Anyway, he asked what it would be like to try and swim against a water, a water speed of uh, now they've, they have to, I hate these abbreviations because I don't know where it is. One M stroke S. What's that? What water speed is that? I haven't got a clue what that means. And Sergeant Denison Wilkins replied, it would be almost impossible to swim against the current. You'd have to go with the current and find a place of safety. You know, and I think that makes sense because you, but there was no current, of course, on that day. But uh, anyway, let's suppose there was a current and you found that you would, you'd sort of just go like that and you'd hope that it would sort of throw you somewhere. You know, you try and keep your head upwards wouldn't you i'm just sort of visualizing the avenue that if the worst that happened wait for it uh who was telling us was it i don't know if vicky's back on here yet but somebody was telling it was vicky wasn't it they were saying that she'd uh, gone into lock lomond and uh, managed to get out even though she'd been in there for 30 minutes um i'm just be interesting to ask her what she did because i suppose what you should do is just try and just lie there and if there was a current it would take you and you would hope that event you know it would take you up against somewhere that you could grab hold of but you know they got but then uh, before they said that she those other experts said she could have been dead within 30 seconds so but there's nothing here so put it this way there's nothing here so far that tells me uh you know what definitely happened it's all conjecture it's still all conjecture I need to put this, let me stop the screen. I'm going to put up what I'm following so you can see it when I, uh... yeah, because I'm following the Manchester Evening News updates, which seem, which seem to be quite good. Oh, so Vicky said, yeah, I couldn't speak. I was trying to tell my son not to jump in and I couldn't, but it didn't kill me. I'm still here. Yeah. Me, uh, it's, um, it's very, you know, makes you wonder. I don't say so nothing that's been said so far to me. They could call themselves what experts they want. Is anything that's been said so far not conjecture? What, where are the facts? The only facts that we've heard so far is that she died, according to the forensic uh, pathologist, she died of drowning. That's what I said. So that's a fact. Okay. You can say she's given, she's examined her. That's what she said. But all these other things about maybe she slipped down the bank or maybe she couldn't get a breath or maybe she couldn't stand up or maybe this, that is all total conjecture. There's nothing to prove that she fell in the water or any of it so you know that is definitely not proof um and for any of you who missed it no jim they haven't explained how she went over the weir or anything like that so uh no, nobody explains a lot nobody explains a lot nobody knows what so this is what the whole point of this is to try and establish the facts nobody had, so far has explained to me anything everybody can, we all know what we think might have happened you know including me 
it's all what we think. The whole point of the inquest is to try and establish the facts. And what I'm trying to say is that apart from the fact that they've established she died of drowning, um, there is nothing to prove anything else, is there? You know, has anybody, um, you know, actually proven anything yet to our satisfaction or to anyone's satisfaction? I don't school run. The next witness is Kay King, a member of the public who was in the area of the river wire where Nikki went missing. She is one of the last people to see her alive. Right, okay. Now, we didn't do, I didn't know about this person. Well, anyway, let's see. Miss King is a receptionist at a veterinary surgery. She dropped her children off at St. Michael's on Wire Primary School when she saw Nikki. She said that Nikki seemed her normal self and she didn't appear anxious or low in mood. She had the dog Willow with her and Willow was sat in the back of the car. Miss King said they said morning to each other and then started talking about dogs. I presume she was going for a walk because that's what she normally does in the morning after the school run. She said Nikki told her about going to buy dog food the week before and said, oh, I can't believe she's classed as a senior after telling Miss King that Willow was age seven. Yeah, her seniors. He was a senior. I didn't realise actually that Willow was seven. So, yeah, for some dogs that you know that's quite old. Depends on the dog. I had a dog that lived to twenty. A little dog. Little dogs tend to live longer, don't they? I mean, not the Willows, a massive dog. But my little, I had two dogs. One that lived to twenty, and one that lived to seventeen. The German Shepherd we've got now, you know, we don't even like to think about it, but they don't tend to live. But yeah, so they're a senior. That's that's like it for a person when um, people, you know, you go from middle age to elderly, you know, because you talk about, I've seen it on the news, they talk about elderly woman, 50 or whatever. You know, it's all relative, isn't it, and how people look at it. So, see, this is, so that to me is proper evidence. So she saw her. So she did take her children to the school. She spoke to this lady, Kay King. And so that is something that to me is concrete, which really, apart from the um, forensic pathologies, uh, testimony of, of the actual causes of death, etc., and you know uh, the condition of the body etc this is the first thing that i've seen that is actually properly saying about something that actually happened so she was there she was at the school okay she was at the school they said good morning to each other and they started talking about dogs so i think we can assume that that witness uh being a receptionist at the surgery and a mum uh, who takes her children to the school and has seen nikki before can be relied upon for being uh, for that being uh, an accurate sighting. In fact, whoop, I just need to note that down because I'm trying to note that bit. That is literally the first thing um, that I've seen that I thought, right, that's definite. Cause it's all right, the police saying and the experts saying that this might have happened and that might have happened. But that's no different, really, whether they're experts or not. It's not really much different from me saying that might have happened whereas that that is a, a witness testimony that um you know you've got to assume is genuine so but i'm wondering if this is what's going to happen now that the um the witnesses are going to come out um for that timeline this would be where ron would come in isn't it and uh, emma so we may have emma shortly so remember we've got to get through probably so we've had two witnesses so far. We, we, you know, we still got probably another. Right, here's the guy that saw Nikki from a distance. Um, so 14. So we've had that caking. That was a very short testimony. And now at 14:26, we've got a statement from a man who saw Miss Bully from a distance. Richard Fife was walking his dog on the fields close to where Nikki was last seen, uh, the inquest heard. He says he knew her to say hello to, as they often saw each other while out walking. Between 9.10 and 9.20am, he says he saw 
Nikki from a distance. And this is the key thing, isn't it? From a distance. So what time did Kay see her? Now, see this here, where it's coming to the... Well, I haven't got it. Maybe it will come up later. When Kay King was given her testimony, she's saying that she dropped her children off and uh, spoke to Nikki. Where's the time? Where's the time that that happened? No time. Whereas the guy, when he saw her, so that's between 9.10 and 9.20, he saw her from a distance. So she was on that work call then, wasn't it? Because the work call started at 9.01. Um, so he says he saw her from a distance. Okay, let's see what Mark Thomas, what's the call it's got to say about that. Uh, do you see what I'm saying? Why, the, why is there no time of when that witness saw her at the school? So imagine if the witness saw her at the school at 8.30 and then Richard Five saw her at 9.10. Then we'd be, we'd, have a, we'd be thinking, right, there's 40 minutes that's missing. Or did um, the witness at the school see her at 9 o'clock? I would imagine she... What, Gosh, she, we have to look back through all this. What was the time that Paul said she left? You know, um, normally, or well, certainly when I was taking my son to school, you're normally there a little, you're normally at the school for 10 to 9, aren't you? Maybe, maybe there'll be days where you'll be late. and um, But I think generally you try to get there, you know, you, you you know, with no offence to children, but you know, sometimes you just can't wait to get them there because you've probably got a day's work lined up or, you know, you've got things that you've got to get on and you just want to get them there. And, you know, it's all a bit chaotic, isn't it, in the morning? Let's see what he says. What? 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 Please search a browser. Right, so Mark Williams Thomas is saying a witness who knew Nicola Bully on the morning he was walking his dog about 8.50 past the... Oh, oh, this is what's coming up now. So this same witness, Mr Fife, Richard Fife, says he saw a male he referred to as a man in black as he walked towards where he saw Nicky and assumed he was waiting for a lift. God, this is Emma, isn't it? This is Emma. Mr. Fife says he then saw him again on his way back. He was dressed all in black and possibly a beanie hat. Remember that weird interview with Emma when she had the cap on pulled right down over her head? And Miss, oh no, he's six foot one inches tall. Oh well, was it Paul then? He was dressed all in black and possibly a beanie hat. And Mr. Fife thought it was strange he was still there. Because the thing is, in these small villages, people notice strangers. You know, he goes that walk probably every day, sees Nicky or, you know, you don't take much notice, do you? And then he's seen this guy, the man in black who he didn't know, assumed he was meeting for a lift. And then he says he saw him again on his way back and he thought it was strange he was still there. He was about six foot one inches tall. Mr. Five says he then got in his car and drove off. When he drove past where the man had been, he was gone. After hearing Nicky had gone missing, Mr. Five says he reported his sighting of the man in black to police. Now, that is a key event, isn't it? Have it did we know about them? I think that's the first time I've ever heard of the man in black. Had anyone, let's have a look, I'm going to have a look at the uh, chat. Had you heard of the man in black? Had any of you heard of the man in black? I've never, Mitchy, I've never heard of the man in black before. So where's this come from? Uh, oh. I'm just looking, having a... 
Yeah, who's this man in black? It's new, I think. I've never heard of the man in black. Foundry, you've not known. And all of us on here, we, we've really followed this case. And this is the first time uh, this has been mentioned. Okay, let's go back and see if any, that's very interesting. So it's about six foot, one inches tall, a beanie hat. A beanie hat, that's like a baseball cap, is it? Is that what a beanie hat is? Very odd. So, this dog walker saw the man in black walk towards where he had seen Miss Bully. And he assumed he was waiting for a lift. And then he saw him again on his way back. He was dressed all in black and possibly a beanie hat. He was about six foot one inches tall. Mr. Fife got in his car and drove off. And when he drove past the where the man had been, he was gone. Gosh, gets curiouser and curiouser, doesn't it? So who was the man in black? Right, next witness. So sales executive Claire Cheshire is the next witness. Miss Cheshire says she saw Nikki at around 8.40 as both mums dropped off their children at school. And that's what I was saying. I think you tend to drop your children off a little bit before nine, don't you? You know, if, if they're due to start school at nine, you tend to be there, well, at least by 10 to. And she's saying, now Claire Cheshire's saying that she saw Nikki at 8.40. So it seems like it was actually Nikki she saw because she said, as Nikki would always do, she bent down and stroked my dog smiling at the same time as walking along in the direction of Garstang Road, which was very normal behaviour. Miss Cheshire says, she would often see Nikki out as the two regularly took their dogs on similar walk routes. She later saw Nikki and Willow again, approaching the gap between the two fields. She could see Nikki in the corner of the lower field, the inquest is told. So she's saying that she saw her there, actually saw Nikki there uh, in the corner of the lower field. And, I mean, did you see her from a distance? I mean, how close? She obviously did see her at the school uh, because she bent down and stroked her dog, smiling. And then she would, she's would. she gone off to... Um, she said she later saw them again approaching the gap between the two fields. She could see Nikki in the corner of the lower field. Gosh, I mean, it's interesting. I'm still sort of wondering about this man in black. I wonder, uh, look, they flagged that up as a key event. I mean, that really is a key event. A man in black walked towards where he saw Miss Bully. I mean, you know, when I, if any of you have got dogs, I'm sure you feel the same as me. When I'm out in the campo walking the dog, and I, if I see people with dogs, I don't really you know even if it's a guy on his own with a dog if they've got their dogs that's what they're doing but if i see a guy sorry guys but it's just the way it is if you see a guy and they don't have a dog with them and they're in a place where people normally walk their dogs you think why are you here without a dog you know it, that you do notice it you know that uh, has happened it did happen to me once many years ago exactly that I heard a, a guy is whistling and i've turned around thinking he's whistling his dog look around there's no dog and this guy is actually exposing himself in a tree over the other side of the field and it was absolutely terrifying experience as soon as you just heart drops because you're just thinking oh my god i'm in the middle of this sort of well, it's like a field with a bit of woodland this guy is there doing that and you're just like what what freeze you just freeze you know there's a lot of things you think you'll do but you do freeze you don't know what to do um but it's suspicious it is suspicious to see a man walking without a dog in a, a spot where people walk dogs what else is he doing there so the the other guy the witness said he thought he was waiting for a lift mr five says he he saw a male he referred to as a man in black and he assumed he was waiting for a lift and where had he seen Nicky why would he think he was waiting for a lift on the fields 
Oh, oh. Yeah, I need to have a good look at this after as well. That's very worrying, isn't it, this man in black? But there were no appeals for this man in black. Do you know when normally, like, if there's um, an inquiry going on and there might be some CCTV of, and there's somebody, but it be a man or a woman, um, then the police will say, we want to find this person to eliminate them from our, our inquiries, don't they? That's what they say. They say, if you are this man in black, because obviously if the man in black, he could be someone completely innocent and nothing to do with anything. He could have just been where, uh, waiting for a lift. But there was never any appeal made where the police said, we're searching for a particular person who was seen as a man. Of, well, I didn't see it anyway. And, uh, and then that person would, if they were innocent, would come forward and say, oh, I was that man in black. I was waiting for my friend to pick me up to go to work or I was blah, 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 blah. But this is just a sudden thing, isn't it? That we're just suddenly being told about and there was no appeal, as far as I know, all those press conferences and they never mentioned the man in black. Now, right, I've got to come on to chat now to see what, don't you think it's strange? <laughs> The man in black, no, they never appealed for, for him. Well, unless he appears now as a witness, maybe he'll come forward and he'll say, I'm the man in black. But Mia, that's exactly what I was thinking. Paul Ansell is about six foot. Why, why were the police in one of those police conferences saying, not saying, uh, there's someone that we think might be a, a witness or might know something we're looking for the man in black? It seemed like that's what I was thinking. Why would he, if Mr. Five saw Nicker in the field, why would the man in black be getting a lift in the field? This is a very, um, this is a very key thing, isn't it? Man in black, about six foot one. What do we think? That's, uh, sounds like. It's like, I, I'm gone speechless again. This is about the fourth time I've been speechless during this. Um, it takes a lot to make me speechless. Probably a lot of you are thinking that, thank God you've shut up because I, I am like a bit speechless. <coughs> anyway, let's go back. See, my voice is going on again. Uh, six foot one and uh, the man in black that nobody's ever told us about before. Okay, let's now we've got. Oh no, so this is Miss Cheshire again. Willow was running up and down the banking, just having a lovely run and play. Miss Cheshire was asked what Nikki and Willow were doing. She says, It looked absolutely idyllic from having a younger dog pulling on a long lead. I looked up and my thoughts were, That's where I want to be with my dog. She was walking along and Willow was running up and down the banking, just having a lovely run and play around the field. Miss Cheshire said that other than Penny, who owns the caravan park next to the river, she didn't see anyone else. So she didn't see the man in black other than one dog walker much further down. I did not see anyone enter, she says. Miss Cheshire says she left the field at around 9.15 a.m. 9.15 a.m. and was captured on near, nearby CCTV at 9.18 a.m. And what time did your man say? Right, so Nick Fife who between 9.10 and 9.20 saw Nicky from a distance, saw the man in black as he walked towards Nicky and uh, again as he walked back. Oof. And then she says, uh, so she left at 9.15. Okay. But she did not see the man in black. 
Yeah. So she left the field at 9.15, was captured on the CCTV at 9.18. So it's around about the same time that Richard Fife was there too. But she didn't see the man in black. Dressed on. Yeah. And you know what? Sometimes when you they say, oh, you know, he said they were about six foot one. But, you know, sometimes you get that completely wrong. You can't, you know, witness testimony. Sometimes you can't, you know, be sure he might, if it was from a distance. Um, God. Right. Okay. Well, that's very interesting, isn't it? Very, very interesting. So she did not. So Claire Cheshire did not see Mr. Fife, who saw the the man in black. She says she only saw Penny. Which why was Penny doesn't have a dog, does she? So why was Penny actually there? She didn't see anyone else other than one dog walker much further down. So Miss Cheshire did not see Mr. Five. Whereas Mr. Five says he was there and he saw the man in black. Good God. It just gets curiouser and curiouser this case, doesn't it? Oh, and that's the other thing, Nicola Marie. Yeah, all those people about and nobody saw her fall in or saw her body float as the policeman said he thought that she would have floated. Uh, yeah. The thing is, I think the, the witness statements in general seem like, I think they are uh, very vague. Um, I, oh, Penny does have dogs, does she? Right, okay. Um you know, I said a while ago on a video that I did many years ago, my nephew and his friends went off to play in a reservoir up in Manchester um, near where we lived and they, they went off and they didn't come back. And we were panicking, uh, me and my sister, we phoned the police and they asked like what they, what he was wearing when he, when he went off on this day out with his mates and we came out with this description of what he was wearing and then literally as the police were actually there that he turned up and he'd just been sort of messing about and what have you and he was thank god he was safe but you know when you know someone's safe and then you get annoyed with them because it made you worry uh but he didn't have anything on that we'd said he had on he was completely dressed differently we just totally you know people forget you know or you, you just get an idea in your head um yeah the man in black has thrown um, a spanner in the works it has found, yeah it has it has sort of um clouded the waters hasn't it and um well, we see there'll be more testimony to come out yet. So we've got a man in black now that we never even knew existed. Um, that suddenly does. A man in black. Yeah, I thought Maggie, the grandson, looked much shorter than six foot. The grandson, you wouldn't look at him and, and your first uh, description of him would be he's tall. Would you? I mean, he, he doesn't look tall, but I mean, of course, it's difficult to um it's difficult to say i just want to make this point about uh angela fletcher some i think essex boys out <laughs> whoever was saying they were out, whoever was saying they were angela fletcher the comments that they were putting on my channel they just got more and more i mean they were horrible. stop it they were horrible comments like really they're just like I mean, like vile, like uh, comments of that's why, and I ended up uh, removing, you know, there's some, some real sort of serious mental illness there with the things that were being said. I mean, there were horrible comments. Uh, so that's all I would say about that. So I don't know if Angela, who, you know, who Angela Fletcher was, but her comments was real disturbed mind comments. Mm. 
Okay, let's go back and see if we've had any more. Ah, right, the play dates. Oh, I mean, it is good to get these clarifications, isn't it? Because these are the things that we've not had. Clar these are like obvious things that I just think they could have been made clear, really. Miss Bully had been arranging a play date for her daughter. And of course, don't forget, there was a lot of conjecture again. Who was the play date with? Was it with Emma? But apparently not. So we're now hearing from Lucy, a waitress, who had been texting Nikki to arrange a play date between their two daughters. Nikki had texted Lucy the night before she went uh, missing. <coughs> Excuse me. But Lucy only saw the text on the Friday morning, the inquest is told. Lucy replied at 8 30, 13 a.m. and she said, I, as she says, I said my daughter would love to come and play. At 8 59 a.m., Nikki replied, confirming the time and used a smiley face emoji. I think from all this, we can gather that the S yeah. is not going to be the verdict here. That it's just impossible to prove that as a verdict, you yeah. know. to to class that as a verdict with all this even that we've seen so far i think the coroner would not be able to definitely would not be able to decide that uh lucy and nikki were also due to meet up the following day to get of course we haven't heard the doctor's testimony and things yet but we'll see lucy and nikki were also due to meet up the following day together with other mums the inquest is told uh, we were going to be meeting up a group of mums on Saturday night for a few drinks, uh, says the witness. And Emma had said that as well. Just excuse me, I'm just going to put the dog in there. She's too ear splitting. Ear splitting. So that's interesting, isn't it? So the person that should arrange the play date, and it was not Emma, it was Lucy, a waitress, who'd been texting Nikki to arrange a play date between their two daughters. And Nikki had texted the night before she went missing, but Lucy only saw the text on the Friday morning. Lucy replied at 8.13 and says, I said my daughter would love to come and play. And at 8.59 a.m., Nikki replied, confirming the time, and used a smiley face emoji. And they were due to meet up the following day on the Saturday night with other mums. So I really do think, uh, <clears throat> let's see what you all think about that, but it seems from what we know so far, uh, it can't have been the big S. And Kurt and Lisa, hello. No, she wasn't cremated. She's been buried. Uh, let's see. It can't be suicide. Ooh, I'm not supposed to say it out loud. It cannot, I don't think, be. I don't think there's anything. <laughs> Tom Cruise will prop up. No, it feels like that, doesn't it? It's, uh, it feels like. I think she may have been, do you think she was pushed into the river, maybe? But I've thought that before, but um, anyway, let's carry on. We've, we've got to hear all the evidence, I suppose. Uh, we've got to, you know, if if what the, the conclusion is so far, so just let me get my water. Where's my water? Um, my voice is going. From what we've heard so far, I would say, if I was the coroner, and I know I'm not the coroner, but uh, there's no proof that she tried to, you know, they haven't produced any notes yet or anything to say that she was planning anything like that, unless something comes up with the doctor's um, evidence, you know. We've, so, and it sounds like she was making plans, etc. And when, her, when Louise comes to do her testimony they were supposedly organizing spa day as well weren't they so i think we can establish so far that it was an s self-deletion so if we're going to establish that it leaves two options doesn't it foul play or accidental death or misadventure but i mean so I suppose we're left with three, So, it, but for all those, you still need 
<clears throat> you need the proof, you know, at the end of the day, if there's no proof, uh, it's going to, it's got to be an open verdict, hasn't it? If, if they, all they can prove, if all they, they can prove is that she went into the river and she drowned, but they can't prove how she ended up in the river and drowned, it's surely it's got to be an open verdict until something else comes up. Um, I'm just having a look on Twitter, uh, your man. All ah, right, now a little bit more that Mark Williams Thomas is saying is that uh, when he saw the man in black on the footpath, then he passed a man with a dog, then kept walking. And when he was near to the bench, he saw Nicola with the phone around about 9 10 to 9 20 with the phone in front looking at the screen and he could not hear see or hear her talking was that Nicola was that Nicola or was it someone covering their face and trying to look like Nicola mm. that you know mm, well anyway we don't know we'll see more things coming out as we speak, let's see what else. Ah, right. So, according to Mark Williams Thomas, let's see if that's come up on here yet. The caravan park owner, which I'm presuming is Penny, is it? She's the owner, isn't she? So that's who they mean. We should say actual names so we knew who they were actually talking about. The caravan park owner, now he's saying, it hasn't come up on here yet, uh, approached the stile and saw a loose Springer Spaniel near to the bench, not chaotic. She climbed over the stile, she saw the mobile, so it was Penny who found the mobile. She saw the dog harness between the bench and the water on the ground, was worried about the dog, so tied her up to the bench to be continued witness saw when they should not see in here huh? right yeah I'm waiting for the second part of that ah she called the mobile number on the dog collar and the number was wrong she called the vets because the name of the company was on the collar the phone was lit up, line across a man name in each box. Phone was lit up, in other words, line across a man name in each box. I think that he's tried to say that very quickly. It'd be better when it comes up on here, maybe with it a bit more clear. It's obviously taking them longer on the Manchester Evening News to get it up here but I think Mark is trying to say it too quick so it's a bit garbled and I can't really understand uh, what he's saying so I might have to wait for clarification of that but basically he's saying it was Penny that found um, she, she approached the style she saw the loose Springer Spaniel near to the bench not chaotic climbed over the style saw the mobile on the bench saw the dog harness between the bench and water on the ground Worried about the dog, so tied it up to the bench. And then she phoned the vets, the mobile number that was on the dog collar, and the number was wrong. Called the vets because the name of the company was on the collar. And this is the bit I don't understand what he's saying here. Phone was lit up, line across a man name in each box don't know what that means ah here we go finally so the next witness is Ple penny fletcher the owner of the campsite in saint michael's on wire close to where nikki was last seen mrs fletcher took her dog for a walk at 9 30 a.m and found willow with nikki nowhere to be seen oh she's given evidence through a video link Giving evidence via a video link, she says, as I came around the bend, I came to a stile. I tied up my dog and climbed over the stile. I saw this Springer Spaniel, it was near the bench, and then it was going towards the river where it drops down really sleep, uh, steep. 
it wasn't doing anything chaotically it was a bit giddy i saw a mobile phone on the bench and be between the bench and the river i saw a bundle in the grass i walked down and it was one of those dog harnesses now this is what i find difficult so you know when they were talking about the lead and the harness a lead is completely different from a harness isn't it you put a harness on your dog and then the lead clips onto the harness and then when you decide to let your dog off your off the lead because you're in an open place where you can you know let them run around you don't take the harness off you just don't clip the lead and let them run around and then also you can grab hold of them uh, if you need to so yeah i don't so i walk down and it's one of those dog harnesses it seems strange to me that the harness was off the dog anyway when she got back to st michael's on wire after attending a medical appointment in garstang mrs fletcher said she called her daughter-in-law a is that angela fletcher i don't know and asked about the dog she said oh no it's nikki's dog and nikki has gone missing now right okay so what she's saying is she found the dog she tied the dog up to the bench and then she went off to this medical appointment and so how long was she at the medical appointment for before she called her daughter-in-law and asked about the dog right okay are we going to get some clarification of that so she took her dog for a walk at 9 30 found willow with nikki nowhere to be seen so this is literally 10 minutes this is where the police have got this sort of timeline of this what happened between 9 20 and 9 30 because they've got the guy that saw nikki at 9 20 approximately they've got uh penny fletcher who found the dog and the phone uh, at 9 30 and she says she came round the bend, she came to a stile, she tied up a dog and climbed over the stile. I saw this spring of spaniel, it was near the bench and then it was going towards the river where it drops down really steep. So from what she's saying, it was going down towards a river where it drops down really steep. So had Nicky gone in there? It wasn't doing anything chaotically though so it wasn't frantic it was a bit giddy she said oh sure it would be crying i don't know i saw a mobile phone on the bench and between the bench and the river i saw a bundle in the grass i walked down and it was one of those dog harnesses again why was the harness off willow why did it snap i mean they do snap but you know that should have been tested really shouldn't it should have been looked at you know if you'd gone to grab your dog maybe because you were worried it might go to run down into the river and the harness came away in your hand because it was breaking but surely that should have been looked at but of course nothing was really looked at and then she went off for a medical appointment which is fair enough uh, fair enough when did you phone the vet when did she phone the vet? Uh, so you couldn't go off and just leave the dog there, could you? Surely. Or you would phone somebody else that you knew. I mean, bearing in mind they all live nearby, you'd phone your sister or your brother-in-law or you, uh, the, a nephew or grandson and say, look, can you just come? I've got to go and met, to go to my doctor's point because that could have been something really important. We don't know. I've got to go to my doctor's appointment can you just come and be here with this dog until the owner comes back or can you ring the police for me and say this dog's been found you wouldn't just go off and do nothing all right i'm sure we'll hear more in a minute let's see what mark's got to say about that yeah still don't know what this is phone was lit up lying across a man name in each box i've no idea what that means no idea let's see you all okay there in chat are you enjoying um you know di discussing it between you what do you you know are you 
Are you having a chat about what I'm reading out between you? Um, yeah, why is she giving video evidence? Yeah, it could have been Penny who shoved her in. We don't know. Penny Fletcher has now confirmed that she found Willow's harness halfway between the bench and the water. Her evidence via... Yeah, you know, you wouldn't... Um, wouldn't take the harness off and yeah how can you take a harness off if you're dead in the river already anyway so i just don't really understand that um yeah where was the lead oh gosh it'd be it's very uh confusing isn't it i don't think it's getting much well at least now we do because what was bugging me was it was never was it ron who found the phone was it penny you know it was never clear who exactly found the phone but now we know it was penny who found the phone yeah tied up my dog and climbed over the stile uh, i'm just wondering why she tied up her dog and climbed over the stile i thought it was like a kissing gate that you just did you have to climb over it what are you climbing over it for because she's not young, Penny. Uh, you know, I'd be struggling to climb over the stone, and I think I've probably got at least 15 years on Penny. The dog was a bit giddy. The other thing is, you would know, wouldn't you? I mean, if I, if you walk to a certain walk every day and they, they're creatures of habit, village people are creatures of habit, and you do see the same people every day with the same dogs, now, you might not know that person's name, and Ron said that, and I think that's very true. Uh, for me, you'd know the dog, and you'd know the person that normally walk the dog, even to an extent that I've seen people, I've recognised the dog, and I'd say to the person, whoever was walking there, oh, where's the lady who normally walks the dog? Because you, know, you don't know even know that woman's name. You know the dog's name, probably. But um, you don't know the person's name, but it's strange to you that the person who normally walks it is not there. You know, we notice these things, dog walkers. That's what we notice. You get talking to people, but you never really get the owner's names. You just get the dog's names. We talk about our dogs. That's what we have in common. You know, we don't know each other as friends. We just know each other as dog walkers. Uh, now, apparently her video evidence has finished, but um, it's not come up with any new one yet. Let's see if Mark's got anything more to say. No, it's still coming up This with this phone was lit up line across a man name. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Okay. So let's try and make a guess who the next witness will be. So if it's in chronological order like this, it's got to be Ron next, is it? Because it wasn't it Ron who came round the corner then with his dog and <coughs> and when he was talking to Sky News anyway, Ron said to Sky News, he came round the corner and he saw the phone on the bench and he saw the dog and he thought someone had gone to the loo in the trees didn't he you know that's a, so a lot of people got confused about that they thought he was saying that they some there was a toilet in the tree so there was no toilet what he was thinking is someone's got caught short and decided to just go and have a quick uh but did he actually see the back of someone or did he just imagine that because he was thinking why would a phone be there otherwise or um and then yeah this is like They've sort of skated over that sort of very strange bit where it was that the phone moved to the bench. Uh, not Nikki took the phone and put it on the bench, but probably I suppose they can't say it because nobody actually saw her doing that. One minute Nikki had the phone in front of her face, talking, you know, covering her face, and next minute the phone was on the bench. But why was the phone not in Nikki's pocket or in a so let's suppose some emergency had happened with the dog, which led to her slipping in. So let's see, let's imagine it. So she's walking, she's on her work call. Why she would have the phone to her face, I don't know, because these work calls, apparently she didn't participate in, did she? She only had to listen to them. So really, you'd have it up to your ear because you're just listening. There weren't, um, it wasn't a work call that she had to actually participate in. 
So, according to the witness, she's got the phone here in front of her face, but I think may have been to cover her face, not her, but somebody else. And then, well, let's presume it was Nikki. So she's got a phone up to her face. She's walking around. The dog's having fun. And then suddenly the dog looks like maybe it's getting into trouble or it's going to fall in the water. So she runs over, tries to get the dog. The harness comes off in her hand and she falls into the water. Let's, I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm just saying, let's suppose. Where's the phone? Why is the phone on the bench? She'd have the phone with her and they say, oh, so what's she done? Just stuck it Ah, Just doesn't make sense, does it? So I'd like I'm I'm and then she said apparently uh, she said, Oh no, it's Nikki's dog and Nikki has gone missing. This is what her daughter in law A. So a daughter-in-law A, is that Angela Fletcher daughter-in-law? So that's not Ron's wife, is it? Because isn't Ron her sister's husband? Who is her daughter-in-law? This is this elusive Angela Fletcher, this very strange person that was on not only my chat, but a lot of people's chat, or a lot of YouTubers' chats. But honestly, some of the, I, I should have screenshotted them because they just got more and more bizarre and like really revolting you know it's like someone who had a serious sort of mental illness like to be saying things like that so you know i had to get rid of her off the chat because or whoever it was i don't think it was a real person maybe someone pretending to be angela but um I don't think, well, if, if Angela was a person that would say things like that. Right, here we go. We've got another. Uh, so the caravan owner continued. They saw a I saw a man walking towards me from a brick building when I was tying the dog up. I said, I'm tying this dog up. He just laughed. Well built, six foot, 70 years old, had a dog with him. I think he's a local. Right. Okay. So, so anyway, so something else has come up now on the Manchester Evening News. So let's read that. Susan Jones is the wife of Roger Jones, a dog walker who Penny Fletcher tried to call for help after finding Willow. Roger was out walking the couple's dog, Jet, who Susan said has since passed away. Oh, bless. She said she called her husband at 10.12. That's quite a long time after now, aren't we? So we've gone from 9.30ish, but now we're at 10 past 12. She says, Roger says there's a phone on the bench, but I don't know how to work it. The inquest is told she then quickly walked to the riverbank where Roger was. Susan picked up Nikki's mobile phone and it showed the image used as the lock screen was one of Nikki, Paul and their children. Roger recognised Paul but didn't know where he lived, the inquest is told. Oh, Anne-Marie Fletcher. Susan then came across Anne-Marie Fletcher Penny's daughter-in-law, who recognised Nikki from the picture and called the school. She has children who go to the same school as Nikki's two daughters. Yeah, because I always wondered why was the school called? Um, but of course, if, if Anne-Marie recognised Nikki, uh, you know, and that they're, and if they didn't, you know, they knew they recognised Nikki. And they perhaps knew that she was Paul's partner, but they didn't know where Paul lived and they didn't have Paul's phone number. So I suppose it's logical then that they would call the school who would give them information because she knew uh, that Nikki, Nikki's children went to that school too. But I'd like to know, where is this bit that he's saying? Oh, so, so apparently Penny had said she saw a man walking towards her from a brick building. When I was tying the dog up, I said, I'm tying this dog up. 
he just laughed. He was well built, six foot, 70 years old, had a dog with him, believe he was a local. I think we've seen him on some footage, haven't we? But um, still, we don't know where the man in black is or ended up going. Gosh. Ugh. Doesn't explain much, does it? Oh, let's see. So, a man in black. My head's reeling as well. This, like, ah. yeah. I, you know, Jennifer, I don't know. It's okay. They all seemed to be there at the same time, didn't they? But they didn't see. Uh, they didn't see each other. You know, you've got this one saying they saw Nikki, that one saying they saw Nikki, or they saw the man in black, or they saw uh, Kay or Penny, or, but they didn't all seem to see each other. I remember thinking that when I saw that Sky News walk around there, and I thought, how could nobody see what's happened here? It's not a hidden place. It's an open place. So... I, you know, I, I have thought for a long time she could have been shoved in that river by someone. I agree with you, Kurt and Lisa, and I've offered that. I don't know. They, I think there's a, a strong possibility she could have been pushed in that river. What's Street Hawk doing, Princess Tippy Toes? What's Street Hawk, what are you doing that, you, that people are getting upset? Street Hawk. What, what's Street Hawk doing? I'm just trying, I can't see. Well, Street Hawk, I'm going to give you one more chance because the people that are saying, asking me to block you, these are people that are always on my chat. And we've got a nice little community here. We don't get any problems. So literally is your last chance. But if I get another complaint, then I'm going to have to block you, I'm afraid because uh, I don't want the chat disrupted and people not to be happy because most of the time people are perfectly happy in my chat and everyone's really nice to each other. Gosh, see, so many people asking me to block you. Right, okay. Right, okay, so what we're, but the conclusion we've come to about Street Hawk is one more funny comment and I'm blocking you. At the moment, I'm not blocking you, but if you make one more timeout, I don't know how to do that. Uh, see on here, it's, ah, there it is. Go on, we'll put you in timeout and you have a little think about it. Be nice. Yeah, because we just don't need that. I'm not doing that. You know, we just don't need it. So he's in timeout. And if, if I'm saying he it might be a woman, but I, I, I don't know. Um, we just don't want that, do we? I've put him in timeout. He literally is in one strike and you're out. So if he comes out and says anything else, just put it back and then he's gone. You know, it's like the naughty step, isn't it? You got, you know, some sometimes we have to be kind to people because... Uh, you know, you don't know what sort of problems they've got. But um, that literally is just one time. He's he's not in there now. He's in time out. If he comes back, he makes one more comment. Because it's not just you, Silver. But, you know, a lot of people have complained about him. So we don't want that. We just want... He started off all right earlier on. but Because he was in this morning as well. So I don't know why it suddenly started being weird. But anyway, there you go. You don't know what problems they've got, these people. So, right, let's go back and see what else is occurring. Oh, here we go. Paul, Paul, Paul's up. So, 1514, Miss Bully's partner, Paul Ansel, said she was struggling when she went missing. Just make me angry, this. No, I don't want to get angry. But anyway, the inquest is told that Anne-Marie, Anne-Marie, who's Anne-Marie? Uh, God, 
trouble is you do Anne Marie. Ah, Anne Marie is Penny's daughter in law. God, you get so mixed up with all these characters. So the inquest is told that Anne Marie managed to get hold, hold of Paul on the phone. I thought the school phoned Paul. I thought it was the school because he's. He said in that interview, the school phoned and said, oh, it's a bit of a weird one. Anyway, so Anne-Marie managed to get hold of Paul on the phone. Susan said, Anne-Marie was on the phone to Paul and when she came off the phone, she said, Paul has said she is struggling. Right. So, so somebody phones you and tells you uh, that they found the dog and there's no sign of you and straight away you go oh well she is struggling to a complete stranger to a complete stranger you turn and go oh, well she's struggling i don't think you do that do you but anyway the inquest is told paul arrived at the scene 10 minutes later after he put his gym gear on susan doesn't say that there i'm saying that Susan said she then put the harness on Willow. She was okay with the harness and started to walk the dog towards the metal gate and the dog wouldn't move. Well, that sort of makes sense if the dog wouldn't want to leave Nikki, would it? So, <clears throat> but then Paul was there. So, when the dog turned around, there was a retractable lead hanging down. And when I moved that, she was fine. So I started, I put, I put the harness on. Ooh. I don't understand this. She was okay with the harness and I started to walk the dog towards the metal gate and the dog wouldn't move, she said. When the dog turned around, there was a retractable lead hanging down and when I moved that, she was fine. She turned around, hanging down where though? Hang, uh, hanging down where? Let's see what Mark Thomas Sujimi Bobby has to say about that. Oh, he hasn't got as far as that. Uh, I don't think, no. Nope. So that's a strange thing. So, because we were wondering where the lead was. So they had to, it was a retractable lead hanging down. So what, hanging down off uh, Willow's neck? You know, it does make you, maybe the harness did come off, I don't know. But anyway, uh, I just still think it's a funny, you know, because I think if someone phoned me about my family, any of my family, and even though I knew she was struggling or knew they were struggling, I don't think I would say to a complete stranger as soon as they phoned me and said, Oh, we found the dog here by the water. Oh, well, she is struggling. I don't think I would say that. It, it, you know, you wouldn't, you don't know anything's happened then or anything. Um, and, you, you know, people don't tell people their whole life stories, do they? You know, that they don't know. They don't go into details so quickly as that. And the other thing... It was my impression that the school had phoned Paul. Paul said that. He said the school phoned him. And they said, it's a bit of a weird one, Mr. Ansel or Paul or whatever they called him. It's a bit of a weird one. Now she's saying that she managed to get hold of Paul on the phone. What do we think about that? Let's have a look. Has it all gone quiet in the chat now? Yeah. And he definitely said, the school phoned him and said it's a bit of a weird one. Definitely. I've seen that interview a million times now. How many times that I've seen that interview? And that's definitely what he said, that the school phoned him and said it's a bit of a weird one. Oh, don't Mia. No, she can't have been strangled by the lead because there was nothing, uh, no neck. Uh, injuries was there there was no trauma to her neck um <laughs> gosh gosh that's that sort of took me aback a little bit that because like if it, it, 
I don't know, my son went missing and, and, and someone phoned me and said, oh, we found Jack's phone here. I wouldn't say, oh, well, yes, he is struggling. You know, you'd just say, oh, my God, have you? And, I, and you'd be there like, you know, even if you were worried that something might have happened, you wouldn't straight away say to a complete stranger, oh, well, he was struggling. It's like he's laying down. He's laying down the narrative straight away, I think. But um, mm -hmm. let's see what, what's next. What's next? Right. Yeah. Miss Bully's partner, Paul Ansel, said she was struggling when she went missing. And nothing more has come up on Mark Williams. I'm just going to let the dog back in. So the dog was on a timeout in the bathroom because she kept barking. So let's see if she's learned anything like the other person that was on the timeout. Are you going to be good now? Hey, no barking. No barking. <coughs> no barking. I've lost my water again. Oh my God, I'm going to have no voice left for tomorrow. I don't know how I'm going to get through tomorrow as well. Uh, where are we? <coughs> oh goodness. I won't be able to talk for the rest of the evening. That's it, I'll have to rest my voice. Right, so it hasn't moved on from that yet, from Anne-Marie getting a hold of Paul on the phone despite Paul saying that the school had phoned him. I remember saying at the time when I was looking at it, that interview the first time on the video, I couldn't imagine a school receptionist saying that to someone. Oh, a bit of a weird one. You know, that's more of a thing that he would say because he actually uses the word weird very often. That's quite strange. Nothing's updated. Do you think something dramatic's happened? Let's see. It just seems to be not updated for a little while. 15.14 was the last one. Well, so it's uh, 15.25 now. Maybe they're still interviewing. Maybe the coroner is still... Interview. Gosh, I'd love to be a fly on the wall and actually hear it. I mean, it's good that we've been able to update like this, but it would be good to be there and actually hear everything first hand. You get feel then, don't you, as well for people for what they're saying, and um, you know, feel of whether what they're saying is true, etc. I mean, I feel that these these witnesses. I think they're speaking the truth from how they remember it. There may be things that they've got slightly wrong just for the fact that, you know, witnesses do get things wrong. Uh, but I don't feel that they've got any reason to actually lie about things. Um, but I think, the, I think the biggest revelation so far has been the man in, the, man in black. Was well, that somebody like waiting to push Nick in the river? It won't have escaped the coroner's notice. I mean, don't, you know, at the end of the day, the coroner won't be sitting there thinking, oh, a man in black, that's nothing strange. He'd be well aware that a man in black lurking around like that, <clears throat> a place where people go to walk dogs, is a little bit um, suspicious. It's just, what do you do with that? And, where, and why did nobody else see that man in black? That's strange, isn't it? All those people there. And none of the other witnesses seem to see each other. <laughs> you know, they were all there at or around the same time, but none of them seem to see each other. In a big expanse open sort of field like that, you know, it's not as if it was a place where there's lots of houses and stuff and people could hide behind things. It's an, an open expanse. Oh God, he seems, I think he's uh, Mark, Mark Williams Thomas, he's just putting them all together now and just saying a series of witnesses are being spoken to who saw Nicola on the morning of a disappointment. 
disappearance. So he's gone from sort of describing them all individually, he must have got fed up with that because he's just bundled them all into one. And yet they're all really important. Each one is individual and important. So that's, um, you know, come on, that's a bit annoying that, Mark. Now they've put this as a key event in the Manchester Evening News of uh, Paul saying she was struggling when she went missing. I think that is a big red flag, isn't it? It's like, um, hmm, I'm trying to think it's of, a, of something. This is the gaslighting, isn't it, of saying that people are mentally ill. A, a lot of uh, domestic V situations, uh, the men can often quite make out that, you know, when my ex-partner was stalking me, and he was, you know, having a nervous breakdown that basically ended up uh, deleting himself and he would have taken me with him if he could have found me that day. But just luckily for me, someone was looking after me that day and I wasn't where I was supposed to be. Uh, I, I was supposed to be at university and he went looking for me there. But luckily I wasn't feeling very well and I'd stayed at home that day and he didn't know where I was living. Uh, he was going around telling everyone that I had... Um, mental problems and you know what he meant was she was she must have mental problems because she doesn't want to be with me anymore it's like well you know you must be mentally unstable because otherwise you just want to be with me so this is the sort of thing that does happen and it happens a lot so straight away when she phoned up a person that he doesn't even know he said oh well she is struggling it was just totally unnecessary that wasn't it you, you'd, you'd be concerned about your partner. You won't be, um, you know, just straight away say, oh, well, she is struggling. Um, <coughs> I'm just, uh, I'd be quite nice to get someone to make me a coffee. <laughs> but <laughs> I might get one. Anyway, so. Uh, let's see. So, no, that's still not updated. Why is that not updated? Maybe they're just assimilating all the different things. The, the different... With, uh, and also a spoonful of the other one, please. Um, no, it hasn't moved away now from uh, Anne-Marie yet. So, let's, let's go back then. Well, that's on a sort of a... a stalemate if you like it's not updating with the new let's just go back to these uh, witnesses so we saw who was the first one yeah so we had uh Kay king she was the one she said that uh, nicola was her normal self on the school run and she saw her at the school and she spoke to her she's a receptionist from the veterinary surgery they had a brief conversation and she seemed fine. Um, was she the one with the... Then we had the statement from the man who saw her from a distance, Richard Fife. He saw her between 9.10 and 9.20 from a distance on the fields. Um, then he was the one who then also, at the same time, saw a man in black this mysterious man in black that's never ever been mentioned before that he saw him walk towards where he had seen miss bully and he saw this man in black assumed he was waiting for a lift and he saw him again on the way back and he was dressed all in black and possibly a beanie hat and mr five thought it was strange he was still there he was about six foot one inches tall Mr. Five got in his car and drove off, and when he drove past where the man had been, he was gone. He reported it to the police. Then we had Claire Cheshire. She saw Nikki as well at the school at 8 40. And she said she would, you know, she bent down and stroked her dog and then she went off on her walk. And she said she would often see Nikki out as they took regular, regularly took the same route. Uh, and Miss Cheshire said that Nikki and Willow were 
you know, uh, Nikki was walking around and Willow was running around her. And um, other than Penny, who, thank you, other than Penny, who owns the caravan park, she didn't see anyone else other than one dog walking much further down. I did not see anyone enter. So she did not see the man in black. She left the field at 9.15 and she was captured on camera at 9.18. So we know that she did leave at that time. <clears throat> then we heard from Lucy Musella, a waitress. She'd been texting. She was the one that was arranging the play date uh, for their daughters. She texted. Nikki had texted her the night before. Lucy replied in the morning at 8.13 and said, yes, my daughter would love to come and play. And at 8.59, Nikki replied, confirming the time and using a smiley face emoji. And they were also due to meet up on the Saturday together with other mums on a Saturday night, on the Saturday night for a few drinks. Then the next witness was Penny. She, found, uh, she came along at 9.30, found Willow with Nikki nowhere to be seen. Penny gave her evidence via a video link. She tied up her dog, climbed over the stile and saw Willow. She said uh, she wasn't acting chaotically, but just was a little bit giddy. And she was going towards the river where it drops down really steep. She saw the mobile ben uh, phone on the bench and then she saw the dog harness. She went off to her doctor's appointment and then she called her daughter-in-law. Uh, and then that last witness that we had, which uh, was, <coughs> sorry, not the last witness, but another witness was Susan Jones, the wife of Roger Jones, um, <coughs> which they were out walking with their dog who has since passed away. And Roger, she said she called her husband at 10 past 12. So 40 minutes have gone past now. And Roger said, there's a phone on the bench, but I don't know how to work it. She walked down to the riverbank where Roger was. Susan picked up Nikki's mobile phone, showed the image on the lock screen was Nikki, Paul and the children. Roger recognised Paul, but he didn't know where he lived. Then they came across Anne-Marie Fletcher, Penny's daughter-in-law. <clears throat> now, when they say that, that's a bit strange, isn't it? Susan then came across Anne-Marie Fletcher. How did she come across her? I, I don't really know what that means. But anyway, um, perhaps that's just the person who's writing this, just trying to summarise it. And she recognised Nikki from the picture and called the school. She has children who go to the same school. So that's how they called to the school, went through. And then this next strange thing was that then finally it was Anne-Marie managed to get hold of Paul on the phone. Whereas Paul had stated quite clear, clearly in the Dan Walker interview that it was the school that phoned him and said, it's a bit of a weird one, Mr Ansell. Uh, and now it turns out it wasn't the school, it was Anne-Marie who managed to get hold of Paul. And as soon as she said to Paul what had happened, uh, she, Paul said she's struggling. So Anne-Marie was on the phone to Paul and when she came off the phone, she said, Paul has said, had said she is struggling. That was his first thing he said before to a complete stranger before he even knew what had happened. Paul arrived 10 minutes later. Susan said he then put the harness on Willow. Oh, she then put the harness on Willow. Uh, isn't that a bit odd? Why didn't he put the harness on Willow? Anyway, she was okay with the harness. And I started to walk the dog towards the metal gate and the dog would not move. But when the dog turned around, there was a retractable lead hanging down. And when I moved that, she was fine. So maybe she didn't move because the lead was... Oh, so when she says it's hanging down, so you know those retractable leads. So what it probably happened is that you know it, it um, they expand open and then they clip back again. So was it right up here near a collar? She, then she said, when I moved that, she was fine. She probably felt weird walking with it because it was there. But I don't know. I don't know. 
Uh, anyway, we still have no updates from them. So let's have a look what's going on with it. Let me just make sure you're all still okay um, in chat. All oh, 424 people in chat and only 42 likes. Come on, there must be more likes than that, please. Yeah, don't forget to like. Just a thumbs up, costs nothing. Uh, but it just helps with my YouTube algorithm, that's all. And also it helps people to, you know, people might be interested in coming in and listening to it. So, uh, so Debbie, you're saying Anne-Marie's related to Paul, but is she? I mean, do we know that for certain? Do we know that for certain? Um, yeah. Let me just, I'm going to just... Please hit like button. I'm going to put that up there. Thank you, Sheila. Yes, please hit the like button. Uh, but it was, let's see. Yeah. Well, do you know, Colombo 4711, that's exactly right. If she was struggling so much and Paul was so worried uh, about her, why did he let her take the children to school in the car? You know, you just, you take the car keys off them, don't you? If you've got somebody who you're that concerned about, they're struggling. He, he was too keen to say that to me. But anyway, it, you know, it is. Thank you, Phyllis. Um, thank you, Desi. Hi, Ruth. Struling when it's still as clear as mud, isn't it? We're not much further on, are we, really, from where we were? I mean, some things have been clarified. I like the way that at least now we know it was Penny who, you know, because it was all that, didn't know it was Penny or it was Ron or whoever it was. I think that what's going on now, because it's not updated for a while, and even um, Mark Williams Thomas or whatever his name is, he hasn't updated for a while. I think there must just be several uh, witnesses, are they? Just going one, because they had a lot of witness to, witnesses to get through. So Mark William, Williams Thomas is just saying, series of witnesses are being spoken to who saw Nicola that morning. So it seems like they're just going through a line of witnesses. Um, you know, well, just going down. <coughs> Yeah, no, I'll, uh, shh, are you going back in? Yeah. She did look angry when I watched that CCTV. I mean, we haven't even got to the CCTV yet. That was strange in itself, wasn't it? You know, why did he send that CCTV to a true crime channel? It's just, you just don't do that, do you? You know, your partner as uh, I, I, just why do you do that? Why do you you involve a true crime channel? Send, and it, also, it was only a snippet of CCTV, possibly doctored. I don't know because I don't know enough about CCTV uh, to know that. But at the end of the day, it's, it doesn't take Einstein to work out why it, was it just literally the, them getting in the car. We don't see a drive off. We don't see him go back into the house. You know, it was just there was nothing, nothing to it. And she did look angry. She stomped around that to that car door. Um, she did. She looked angry. I'm sure she was out. They probably just had a big argument. Um, and yeah, no, he, he, he hasn't got any respect for Nicola because, yeah, he's probably drunk himself, to be honest, after he gets his hour on his own in the morning. I mean, when does he do any work? Then always starts late. Thank you, Diane. Um, he starts late. Um, he said he starts an hour later than everybody else. But then he was going to the gym. So when was he actually going to do um, any work? I don't know. Very strange. I feel a bit sorry for. Oh, oh, thank you, Sheila. Thank you so much. So I've just had a message through on here. I'm just oh, that was that message that's from you. Thank you so much, Sheila. I'm going to show that. 
say thank you. I haven't. I don't know how to do the thing with the pictures. I'll, I'll work that out one day and maybe be able to get some good animation up there. Right, let's just look. Is it any advance? Not, no, seem to have been stuck on that for a while because they've been they've been updating quite regular, but there's been no update for a little while. So that was fifteen fourteen. It's now. 1542 and no update yeah now that's interesting that the manchester evening news <coughs> they've included that in their key events miss bully's partner paul lancel said she was struggling when she went missing so there's there's two mysterious things there there's the many for any of you who are just coming in now and you've missed it so far Tell me, any of you have been, you know, because I know most of you that are on here now, you will have been following this case right from the beginning. That's why we're here. That's why we're trying to find out the results of the inquest and wondering what's happening. It's because we've known about this case from day one. We've followed it. We've got invested in it in a, an emotional way. It's brought up so many issues, you know, of um, not only wanting justice for Nicola because she doesn't have a voice now to, you know, Nicola can't defend herself against accusations of being sort of an alcoholic or struggling or whatever um but we're all here for that reason you know because we've become and i think most of us know quite a lot about this case because we've followed it every little bit of information we could you know and i'm sure all of you have not just looked at my channel you've looked at loads of channels and any information you could get from anywhere and do did you ever hear about the men a man in black I mean, this has just completely intrigued me because I've never, ever heard of a man in black. Where has this come in? You know, where, when do, and why was the, were the police not asking for information about the man in black? You know, that's what they normally do. Oh God, I've seen it a million times on Crime Watch and these things. They'll say, oh, we're looking for this person. They'll show a picture of them on CCTV or whatever, or the witness will give a description. And they say, we're not saying this person is involved in whatever's happened. We're just looking for this person to eliminate them from our inquiries. That's what always happened. But this has never happened in all the police um, conferences. I've never heard a man in black mentioned. And, and, from what I asked earlier when it first came up, these my chapters on here, they haven't, nobody knows about it. So why is that? Why was it never asked about or inquired about? Gosh, very strange. Okay, so still not updating. How strange. So let's just go through the so the key events according to the Manchester Evening News. The first evidence from this morning, the evidence from the pathologist revealed classic signs of asphyxia, and then the cause of death given as drowning. I suppose if you think about it, those are two separate things. Or aren't it, it, all right, I've got to Google this. Does asphyxia happen with drowning? Asphyxia. Is asphyxia caused by? Um. Now, uh, asphyxia is suffocation. All right, yeah, what's the difference between drowning and uh, Ah, so it's asphyxia. Yeah? 
when water or another liquid fills the lungs causing asphyxia this is called drowning okay oh there are four types of asphyxia suffocation strangulation mechanical asphyxia and drowning so they're all asphyxia because that completely confused us didn't it this morning when it come on and they said there was classic signs of asphyxia and it was like oh my god because i think we all associate asphyxia with suffocation as opposed to drowning but i suppose it's a type of suffocation isn't it when you um when you you know can't breathe and there's sort of basically the oxygen you've got no oxygen in your lungs i suppose as a result of drowning as opposed to a result of just having your air supply cut off but uh, anyway so that's the cause of death was given as, as drowning now then the inquest was told by some experts uh that miss bully would have drowned in one or two breaths now i don't think they actually said that she would have i think they said that it's possible that she would have i don't think they said anything definite and they've actually missed out here pc plod um who you know the police diver who first of all told us that um she would have what was it she would have floated then she would, and then he said uh, they never checked the bits where um there was the body possibly could have been snagged he said they didn't check those um but the fire service did but nothing was found Oh, somebody else, somebody else sent me a koji. Oh, thank you. Miss. Shush. Shush. Somebody else has sent me uh, a kofi. Thank you so much. That'll come up on here somewhere. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Oh, gosh. Right. Come on. We want some updates. Don't we? Let me see. Let me find that. Oh, oh. Sheila. Have you had. Uh, oh, ah, thank you, Tom. Out. So, Nurse Helen O'Neill will now answer questions for Dr. Aidley. She is another person who is dropping her children off at school. Yeah, that seemed to go very quiet there for the testimony, didn't it? Um, I'm just trying to find, gosh, there's a lot of you here. Thank you so much. Um, oh, and a super sticker from, I, I, I'm a bit overwhelmed now because I, um, I, I try and put, it, put them up when I find them. But uh, gosh, there's, there are a lot of you here, aren't they? Uh, Jason Rothwell. Now, are you the real Jason Rothwell? I did try and get in touch with you if you are. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you so much. Are oh, you very kind? Oh, she heard a scream. All right, let me get onto this now. Sorry, just trying to keep up with everything. Why is it not updating on here? Come on. Right, let's see what mark. Whoop. Yeah, it's still on the Manchester Evening News, it's still talking about uh, Paul Ansell saying she was struggling. It hasn't come up with the new witness yet. Let's see what Mark's got to say. Yeah, not, they're not updating. Fletcher. Right, okay. I think uh, let's see where Tamayo's getting her information from. So, Tamayo, so I didn't think anything of it until later that night. Are you, I'm used to hearing the noises from the school, but not at this time. 
oh well if it is really you good um yeah well have you been following it so far I, you know oh gosh i would like to interview you you know anyway uh going to fast car updates um lancashire live okay oh, the troubled lancashire live they put so many adverts on yeah it's crazy jason it's like we've got this man in black now that we never even knew existed uh, that suddenly is being talked about um then suddenly now it's Anne marie supposedly who told uh, who phoned paul whereas he'd said quite clearly it was the school that phoned him and now i'm trying to get i might i'm going to put up lancashire live as well and see if i can get on there because i want the quicker updates Um, and for those of you who don't know, I, there are people that I know who are there today who obviously they can't contact me at the moment while they're, but in like tonight they'll be sending me like um, an update and one thing, some things that they have said already is it's very quiet there, there's only about 30 public members uh, attending the inquest, so oh here we go nicola bully latest updates um uh, and they're telling me that the family are all sat together but paul and louise have not exchanged any words or anything there's been no communication between them whatsoever it's very quiet there's only about 30 people in the public gallery and there were 70 places and then somebody else was saying that they heard which is a possibility that a lot of the local people applied for a place but then just didn't go they just applied for a place so that other people couldn't go which is fair enough really so um you know uh these are the things that we're hearing um whether they're true or not i don't know but it's really annoying me now that i can't get any uh let's see if lancashire live can help me out on where's the what do you like amy fenton she's the reporter on um lancashire live i do like her her reports that she does where's the updates Yeah, so any of you that missed it earlier, it was decided that she was uh, alive when she entered the water, but she probably would have lost consciousness with seconds. But that is not, you know, these are what the, these are theories. You see how these uh, you can't see it, but all the adverts come up on here. That's the reason why I don't go on to it when I'm on live. I like the Manchester Evening News better because. Um, we don't get quite so many adverts, but they don't seem to be up, they don't seem to have updated for ages. No. Okay. Right, that's a number. I'm going to go back on to. Uh, Oh, Lancashire Post, is it? Sorry, I was going on to Lancashire Live. Lancashire Post, okay, let's try that. Right, this is the live, so let's see, live updates. I 
where are you in the ah here we go here we go right why do they keep doing this putting things over and i can't see it okay so it was a normal day helen o'neill had said it was normal and now she's described ah, so that same helen o'neill said af shortly after 9 30 she heard a scream let me get that off i pictured in my head it was two females teen teenagers walking on the river path and one jumped out on the other i didn't think anything of it until later that night i'm used to hearing the noises from the school but not at this time oh my god this, is this not new as well um, I suppose, you know, we always thought there might be things we didn't know. So anyway, then we've got somebody else who heard the scream. We've got Veronica Clayson from the local tennis club, and she's the next to give evidence. She also heard the brief scream, thinking it was children having fun at the back of the graveyard. It didn't concern her and sounded more like something that comes from an element of surprise. Gosh, what do we think about that? um did we know about a scream i don't remember reading about a scream but it's well sort of vaguely people the trouble is people were talking about things but until pe uh, the police give us official confirmation of things um you know we don't know do we there's so much but there's been so much speculation i've tried really hard not to actually speculate to only deal with things that we knew as facts but then trying to find out the facts has just been so difficult right i want to see what you think about the screams what do you think about the screams so two screams yeah two screams have we heard about that oh yeah don't get the lights please oh linda thank you so much uh, good i'm glad you like it but uh, we'll get you on a live one day hopefully that'd be good wouldn't it um element of surprise bell says someone punching her in the face maybe or pushing her in so we think we've got a man in black what if somebody pushed her in? if they're saying that she did definitely go in the river like that then it makes uh, uh, to me the only i don't think she i can't see how she could have fallen in that water because she walked that walk day in day out for years and uh, she avoided the river's edge she's not she didn't you know she's not daft she's not going to go in after a tennis ball or anything like that be the tennis ball ten a penny you're not going to risk your life for a tennis ball um oh, no these screams were in the morning let's have a look let's see if i can find the actual time brief 9 30 a.m so the scream was at 9 30 a.m um this lady first of all helen o'neill heard it yeah this, she's describing how shortly after 9 30 a.m she heard a scream and then the other lady veronica clayson from the local tennis club she also heard the brief scream but she said it didn't concern her and sounded more like something that comes from an element of surprise. So like children, I mean, to be fair, you know, if you heard, would you, you know, you don't hear a scream and then automatically think someone's uh, being murdered. Oh my God, if you lived in my village, uh, the kids are always screaming. You know, I live in Spain, uh, Spanish children, uh, they, there's not this... The expression children should be seen and not heard doesn't exist here and when i tried to explain it to some spanish people they were like what you know what do you mean children should be heard and not seen uh, it should be seen and not heard as far as they're concerned they should be heard and they encourage them to be heard and they're always screaming there's very often times when i hear like what sound blood curdling screams in my village and i think oh my god what's happened and the next minute they're all laughing and joking so you know you don't necessarily you might hear something and really unless it carries on if you heard someone continually screaming 
and you think, oh my God, what's going on? You phone the police, but just a brief scream. Um, it could be kids messing about, isn't it? They've got a school nearby. Uh, you know, they wouldn't necessarily think somebody was actually being murdered. I'm very surprised with the Manchester Evening News still haven't um, updated that. Let's see what our man uh, Mark is. If he's updated his Twitter because that, I mean, that's a key thing, isn't it? No, he's still just on. Uh, am I not updating or something? Because he's just still on series of witnesses have been spoke to. But surely the scream is a, a big update, isn't it? That's one of the, you know, that goes with the man in black. Man in black and um, scream. I think I might change. Yeah, so 9.30 in the morning. Um, yeah, I'm going to change it. I bet as soon as I change the stream now from, uh, change the screen from Manchester Evening News to Lancashire Eye, there will be, right, what we're doing, what we're doing, uh, stop screen, present, share screen, let's go on to Lancashire Live, uh, Lancashire Post. That seems to have. Okay, let's update it. See if anything more's come. Yeah, no, so we're just as far as the screens now with Lancashire Live. Let's go back down now. Oh, oh God, these adverts drive me absolutely bonkers. Now, tonight, uh, I mean, we've still got a look. I think there's another hour to go yet. My friend who, who, who were at the inquest, they said that Mr. Aidley said they'd be finished at round five. And it's now five past four in the UK. So when it finishes, I am going to prepare an update uh, to upload later on like a, a summary of the main points that we've talked about because obviously uh, we you know we've been on stream all day we've been well the morning and now in the afternoon session and I've, gosh there's so many points aren't there but just like they've done you know i'll be picking out the main points because there'll be a lot of people who are at work today and haven't been able to follow the inquest as it goes and they're interested so many people interested aren't there and not only in the uk but all over the world this case, for whatever reason, has just captivated everyone because uh, I think it there's it's brought up so many issues, hasn't it? It's like, you know, we were saying it's brought up the issues of, you know, why can't a woman just walk a dog and be safe in the country and, you know, not have to worry about being on her own or whatever. It's brought up the issue of uh, domestic violence I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on YouTube or not but I've said it now anyway it's brought up that issue whether there was any or there wasn't any it's made people talk about it it's the failings of the police isn't it the scapegoating of Peter Folding or you know and the police commissioner because I, I you know I I really don't like to uh, do the police down because I think they have a really difficult job but you know the police commissioner he's just like not treated it seriously enough in my eyes uh he's, he's just so flippant about it all and he's, he doesn't really give a mierda uh for nicola you know he doesn't he doesn't care or any and you know he's just interested in his career whereas i do think the police I do think they do uh care but anyway um so it's brought up that issue, it's brought up the issues of the menopause, the perimenopause, mental health issues, alcoholism, all these things that whether they existed in this case or not, or whether they were just smoke screens, it's got people talking about it. And not only in the UK, but all over the world, you know, for some reason, because, you know, people do go missing every day, but this case has just captivated everyone. I think everyone can relate to Nicola in one way or another. 
you know, whether it's because she's got the young kids or whether they relate because they could be a, her mum, you know, they relate to Dot and Ernie. Um, you know, there's some there's something sort of that everybody feels this. And then there's this sense that something is not right. And that's been how it's been right from the beginning. I think people don't feel that for nothing, not the vastness of people that feel like that. That's not for nothing. You know, people don't normally feel like that. There's a million cases that go on and people don't get these feelings. So um, there's something about this case that isn't there. But right, let's see if... I can't believe the Manchester Evening News is not... Uh... Ah, finally. I fi oh, remember the police statement as well. And finally, Nicola. Anyway, never mind, or Nikki. Uh Finally, the Manchester Evening News has caught up with the Lancashire Post. You know, you've got to do better than that, the Manchester Evening News. Uh, witnesses tell of hearing a scream. Two women have told the inquest of hearing a scream near the riverside on the morning Miss Bully van vanished. Oh my God, there must be so many gas going. Now imagine that, uh, a poor mum and dad and that listening to this. Nurse Helen O'Neill says she was with her dogs in the garden of her house on allotment lane. I do like the Manchester Even News ones better, they're much more detailed. That's obviously why it takes them so long to get them out. Um, she was with her dogs in the garden of her house. I've just realised I've swapped over, haven't I, to the other one. So let's go back. I need to go back to... Need to go back to the Manchester Evening News so you can see it. I mean, you can listen to me reading it out, but you, some people like to read it themselves. Okay, so Nurse Helen O'Neill says she was with her dogs in the garden of her house on allotment lane, not far from a path that leads to the bench, overlooking the river wire where Miss Bully disappeared. She told the inquest, I heard a scream. It's not an alarming noise. It was just over in a couple of seconds. Sorry, I just need to have a drink of coffee. I'm quite used to hearing the children in the school out back, but it was not that noise. I vividly remember thinking it's unusual at this time. In my head, I had two females walking along by the river and one jumped out on the other. I didn't think anything of it until later on. There were no other sounds for me to be concerned about. And as I was saying, I think quite often you might hear a scream, you know, and you really, unless it was sustained and it carried on, you would just dismiss it, wouldn't I? I'm surprised she even remembered it, because it'd be <clears throat> maybe only when things were being talked about afterwards, and you suddenly thought, oh gosh, yeah, I heard that scream. A second witness, Veronica Clayson, a housewife and club secretary for the village tennis club said, I was just about to get into the car and I heard a scream, a very short scream. So again, a, a short scream. And my immediate thought was, somebody's having a bit of fun at the back of the graveyard. Oh, Miss Clayson said it was an inhale scream, like a sharp intake of breath. Now, yeah. See, wouldn't they have heard a splash? You know, I know Nicola was only a very slight uh, lady, you know, she wasn't, uh, I'm sure, I mean, believe me, I'm sure they would have heard a big splash if I would have gone in the river. But, you know, even Nicola, as slim as she was, and, you know, she had boots on, she had uh, a coat on, she had clothes on. How could they not, have, how could they not have heard a splash? I heard my little dog, we, we were over at the lake, there's a lake nearby where we live one day uh, when it was really hot and it's a, like a salt lake and I don't walk anywhere near the lake I walk well away from the lake and the next minute I just heard this plop and my little dog had run over to the lake and jumped in because he was so hot um, but I heard him and he's just a tiny well not tiny but he's about 12 kilos and I heard him plop into the water so why did nobody hear um, Nicola fall in the water I wonder do you think that's odd? Never really thought of that before. <sighs> yeah, six boys out, Lord. Yeah, no splash of you being held under. It's true. Because it surely if she would have fallen in that water, 
we would have um, we would know but uh, so what have we got trolls in here is everything okay in the chat we've not got any trolls have we we don't uh, we don't do trolls we don't do trolls oh you're the troll okay are you on steroids yeah we don't do trolls yeah if we don't do people being nasty to each other in a chat you can um disagree with each other that's fine but disagree respectfully we don't call each other names or we don't say horrible things um those people we just don't want you can, they can go to the chats of the people who don't mind that but i don't like it yeah oh gosh we um <coughs> Claire, that was right this morning. That that feels like a lifetime ago now, doesn't it? The um, well, he's gone. Steroids gone. Michelle have got rid of him because he's not nice. So we don't want him. Um, yeah, the police. I'm going to call that policeman as money's PC plug because I just didn't like his testimony at all. And virtually what he was saying is, uh, oh, well, we did make, make a mistake not finding the body because we didn't even bother looking in the first place. So it, was, it can't have been us that missed it. Um, but anyway, has Jason left? He's not left, has he? Well, he probably has because he was being na nasty to Jason. Uh, no, I just, you know, I know a lot of people. Uh, to me, Jason, he were what what is it you know i don't get it i don't get the badness to jason i just don't get it but anyway there you go just uh you know just don't get it hope he's not ah thank you jason so you are a lot bigger exactly you know <laughs> please be respectful to jason or we'll bite your nose off because you know what it's like I know when you put yourself, you well, he'll know when you put yourself up on YouTube or any public platform. At the end of the day, you put yourself up for you know you're going to get trolled. You go, you just know you are, and you have to rise above it sometimes. But what I've learned in the time, you know, because I've been doing YouTube for a long time, but it's mainly my Spanish and English classic. It's, that's completely different. This is like the Wild West compared to that. I've never. You know it's, it's it's very different so um you just have to cope with it don't you but one thing i've learned i don't put up with the trolls now at all they're just gone so whoop, what happened then right let's go let's see some updates because uh, apparently mark oh gosh oh i think somebody oh thank you somebody just sent me um uh, bought me a coffee thank you so much um i can't get the name up i hope i'm uh, gosh i'm worried about um uh can, can i just ask you one thing then jason do you you know nikki you have met nikki's mom and dad that's the thing because that's you know i just feel for them sitting this it, you know we're all getting sort of uh, because we care about nikki but imagine if that's and that's why i got a bit annoyed yesterday because some other channel was trying to you know people are saying that she doesn't exist that she's not a real person and all these psyops uh, stuff i don't agree with that i don't like that at, at all so um because it's like saying that someone doesn't exist and there's their parents and their children without a mother uh it just it's just so disrespectful right rebecca smith next wait well, now buy you a coffee Right, let's see. Come on, who's gonna update me first? Screen Mark Thomas. Oh, Rebecca's coming on. Yeah, I can't make my mind up about Rebecca either. I mean Rebecca to me I think she must be a very clever lady because she's got far in her career. Um but she was very defensive. That that's all. I thought she was very defensive. It was like this um what's this 
Gosh, there's all sorts going on here. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, no, I didn't do that. Oh, for goodness sake. She concluded that, um, that she was alive when she went I've got Martin Brunt talking to me on Sky News. I didn't ask him to talk to me. The pathologist also said from her post-mortem examination, she deduced that Nicola had no alcohol in her body. Right, sorry. I was looking for Mark. I don't know what I'm doing now. I feel like it's just uh, right. Okay. Super, in, super. In, oh. So the trouble with Mark is he's trying to say it too quick, and so I can't understand what he's saying. 0826 she left home, 8 minutes to school, 834 handset school location, dash cam Nikki car, Nikki seen walking towards the Iron Bridge. Ah, so at last we're actually seeing, because that's something that I've been saying for ages, where's the proof that Nikki actually even went uh, that way? Because it says that 841 Nikki was seen walking towards the Iron Bridge. Also, phone places the area of the bridge, then onto the river path, and then 8.46, the phone pinged by the bench. So, there is some dash cam of Nikki in the car, from what I think that's what he's saying there, until one of these updates with the <clears throat> something that you can actually understand. Um, I don't know. Oh, they've been, that's why. So they've been, oh, they've had a 20 minute breather. They didn't tell us that there was a 20 minute breather, did they? It, well, it didn't come up on my thing anyway. We could have had a 20 minute breather. Anyway, we've just, so on Lancashire Post, are saying we've had a 20 minute breather and now we're back for the final part of day one. Detective Superintendent Rebecca Smith is the next person to give evidence. Now, you know, this man, this man in black, whoever he was, may explain why Rebecca Smith was brought in. Because, you know, a lot of us have questioned why Rebecca Smith would be brought in when she deals normally with more serious crimes than missing persons. So that maybe explains that. A little bit more about why she was brought in because um she's the next person to give uh, she's the next person to give evidence but because maybe she was brought in because of the man in black and the screams etc and you know i have said all along that the there are so when the police are investigating a case whatever case it is they can't give us all the information because they give us all the information they've got no case left have they you know, I do think they've perhaps been a bit strange in some of the information they've given. But you know what? I'm not a policeman. <clears throat> I say that about Mr. Aidley. He's uh, the coroner. I don't know how to do an autopsy or to, the, you know, he doesn't know how to teach Spanish. <clears throat> and Rebecca is experienced in her field. Maybe she hasn't got there for nothing. So we've got to give them some respect. You know, I do think she's been too defensive. And I do think they dealt with it badly. Um, but you, you know, you just have to hope. Surely, as a woman, even like Rebecca would want to know what's happened to Nick, and she'd do her best to find out what's happened to her. So it seems like we've. I mean, gosh, it has been one of those days today, hasn't it? So we went from sort of the forensic, uh, the Home Office pathologist. Uh, starting off with this asphyxia thing and we're all thinking oh my god you've been suffocated then it was revealed that it's asphyxia as far as drowning is concerned then she told us about the bruises but she didn't think that Nicola had been attacked before she went in the water but she could have been pushed in the water Do, you know there wouldn't be anything <coughs> would there really if somebody pushed someone in the water there won't be many bruises or there may not be any bruises if they got them close enough to the the edge of the river but anyway i expect that will come up at some point 
Uh, let's go back. So we're still on the screen at the Manchester Evening News. So we're waiting with we're waiting with bated breath for Rebecca's uh, testimony. To talk us through the evidence. Okay. So they're currently being taken through a timeline of events. As per the evidence, we've heard from nine members of the public. But thank God for that, because that timeline has just driven me absolutely mad because everybody going on about it, but when you examined any of it, there was nothing there. It was like, you know, it just faded into nothing when you started examining it. Um, so Nicola sent an email, a Facebook message, joined her team's call at nine. Now we now know <clears throat> that the message she sent was to one of the, um, was to the waitress, wasn't it? Was it Lucy? I'd have to look back down for her name, etc. cetera, um, that was arranging the play date. So it was to come because she'd sent Lucy the message the night before. Lucy hadn't seen it till the morning. Lucy confirmed the play date with Nikki in the morning and Nikki messaged back. So that was the message about the, um, you know, the play date for the children. The email we already knew, I suppose I haven't had a, but I suppose her boss, he wasn't there, was he? That was an email that he sent, so you don't need a witness to say that. Um, and just going back to, I don't know if, um, if Jason, if you're still in the chat, did they not um, ask you to go because you'd already given a statement, I suppose. You're given the police a statement and I presume they got the statement so they didn't actually need you to go there uh, to actually give, you know, testimony. But, um, right, I'm going to, I might have missed some. Yeah, the police were dis disrespectful. Yeah, Jeff Swigger, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, he was there and he found it. So, uh, you know, it, sorry, he found her, not it. And um, at the end of the day, I, I, I just don't see why everybody gets so obsessed with that. Yes, how exactly, Lucia, how are the family doing it? Uh, uh, how are the family coping with sitting there, you know? I know, you know, Essex Boys Outlaw, maybe, I know that it's like hidden evidence, but we don't know because if they're trying to form a case, I don't know, basically, I just don't know. Um, yeah, well, they, why didn't they tell us they're having a 20 minute? minute breather they've only just got back from lunch but anyway there you go no michelle you are right don't be arguing please no more there's no morons in the chat so we don't want um people calling each other morons please that's a word that's not allowed uh as i say if you were you know there are lots of different channels where you can go on and call people all the names under the sun but not here please but Oh, Huda! <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, do you know what? I'm happy to. Let me just, I want to show that. Oh, God, before it goes. Uh, thank you, Huda. Um, we knew, didn't we, really? We knew that there was no evidence to say that Nicola had alcohol in her system. Uh, and all those bad things that people were saying, well, not people were saying, but Paul, basically. And I did, have you been watching this? Did you see that apparently when um, Anne-Marie Fletcher uh, finally got through to Paul, and it was her that got through to Paul, not the school, Paul's first comment was, oh, well, she's been struggling. So that's before he knew anything. She just phoned up and said, oh, we found the dog here by the river and the lead or whatever. And Paul said, oh, well, she's been struggling. That was his first um, uh, first, uh, his first his initial comment. You know, so that's um, that's just bad. And so I was saying, would you say that to a perfect stranger 
who's just, you know, even if you were worried that something had happened to your loved one because genuinely they had been struggling, are you just going to say that straight away to someone who phones you out of the blue that you don't even know? Oh, well, we found your girlfriend, boyfriend, child, uh, son's daughter's dog here by the river. Oh, well, she's been struggling. No, you wouldn't. You'd just panic and um off you'd go as quick as you could you wouldn't stop to put your gym gear on either but anyway there you go we've got to wait and see what he's got to say uh let's see nope manchester Evening news is still on the screens we're going for a timeline event of events what's mark up to we're just trying to get the uh mark's quite good with his updates but the trouble is is too is too short because you can't understand what he's saying but he's given a little update uh at 10 32 nikki's phone is moved from the bench witnesses are tr witnesses are trying to establish who it belongs to from 10 42 to 10 48 seven contacts seven calls from paul to nikki's phone unanswered so that's between 10.42 and 10.48. He's trying to ring her. Um, why is he trying to ring her? Anyway, seven calls from Paul to Nikki's phone unanswered. Just after 11, Paul calls 999. And at about 10 past 11... Paul arrives at the river. So, 10.32, Nikki's phone is moved from the bench. Witnesses are trying to establish who it belongs to. So that's at 10.32. From 10.42 to 10.48, Paul tries to ring Nikki's phone seven times and leaves messages. Oh, I'd like to listen to those messages. Uh, but of course it's unanswered and then just after 11 so that's another 10 minutes later he calls 999 I presume he's already had the phone call from Anne-Marie Fletcher by then and then 10 minutes after that approximately 10 past 11 Paul arrives at the river uh, right nothing's no update here hmm Ah, right, so we've got a little update here. When Willow was found. So the police's precise timeline continues. Penny Fletcher is believed to have arrived at the beach, at the beach, the bench around 9.35 a.m. where she found Willow running loose and the um, harness. The last sighting is supposedly 10 past nine when Claire Chesson sees Nicola and the last human interaction on Nicola's phone was 9.18am where the volume and side buttons are used. Gosh, they can even tell that, they use the volume and the side buttons. 9.18, so who was she speaking to then at 9.18? Because I thought it was between 9, 10 and... God, I get so confused with these timelines. Very confusing. So let's just have a little um, update while we're waiting. A, a little summary. Just people will be coming in now that won't know. So what we've learned today, quite a lot actually. So we've gone from sort of like the police diver giving his... Oh, what, no, we started off with the home office pathologist giving the cause of death as drowning and they didn't feel there was any attack and that Nicola was uh, alive before she went in the water. Then we had the police diver explaining how he thought she might have fallen in and how, um, gosh, so she might have fallen in and how she wouldn't have been able to get out, blah, 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 blah. But then basically it is just a hypothesis that at the end of the day. And he goes into what he sort of investigated in April, but they should have done that right from the beginning. Maybe they might have found Paul Nicola before that. Then uh, we've had, we had some people that were specialists in uh, drowning again giving what they thought you know they don't know for certain what happened again they, that was although it's expert speculation it's still speculation 
<coughs> probably less of a speculation than me said because I don't know anything about drownings. But still, it's, they don't know what happened because they weren't there. So they're just saying what they think could have happened. Then, then we started with the witnesses, didn't we? The different witnesses <coughs> who saw her. We haven't had Ron yet, I don't think, or as far as I know, or maybe we have. Uh, but the key thing that we had, that one of the witnesses that saw Nicola on the field also saw a man in black that, as far as we know, we've never heard of before. He was approximately six foot one tall, wearing possibly a beanie hat, dressed in black, saw them twice he wondered what they were doing there they weren't with their dog he thought they might be waiting for a lift and then when he went back they were still there and then when he drove off they'd gone so that was a bit of a revelation to say the least <clears throat> and then we had all these other people who were there penny etc that we'd known that were there but none of them saw the man in black only this one witness saw the man in black and now we've had this information about two screams that were heard. Well, one scream, but heard by two people at 9.30 in the morning. Um, and then, yeah, people that heard screams, two people that heard screams. Nurse Helen O'Neill from her house on Allotment Lane. And then uh, v Veronica Clayson, who's the club secretary for the Village Tennis Club. Uh, both heard a scream, a brief scream, but nobody heard a splash. So if Nicola fell into the water, why did nobody hear either a splash or willow barking, for example? Let's see, as my Manchester Evening News has been very slow catching up. Oh, yeah, and then we've got this news that... Um, it wasn't the school that phoned Paul, it was Anne-Marie Fletcher, whereas Paul specifically said it was the school that phoned him. Maybe he thought it was a school, maybe he didn't realise who it was. That's possible, I suppose. Let's try and give him the benefit of the doubt. So we're going through timelines at the moment. Uh, we're getting an idea of timelines. You can see the key events of the Manchester Evening News. We've got the witnesses telling of a scream. Let me go back to chat and make sure you're all okay. We've got no trolls, have we? Um, we we've had a couple. We have only had two trolls, to be honest, but we've got rid of both of them. Uh, let me just make sure. I, mean, I, I know that, that my regular uh, chatters, I know David Guess, who's about six foot one, my regular chatters will tell me if anybody's um, being nasty to anybody, even if I miss it. God, <laughs> Joe H. I know, well, it, it's like, I mean, my voice is just completely going, but. Um, I'm glad that we did this because we waited so long. It's nice to get some proper answers, you know. It's like um, because we have speculated. We've had that. We, you know, we've had to speculate because we, didn't, you know, there's so many questions we've had. So it is nice to get some answers, isn't it? And you know, think of um, Nicholas' parents having to sit there through all this. And listen to this and then as i was saying for anyone who's just joining now the people that i know that are there um they have told me that um uh, you've got dot and ernie and then you've got louise and then paul sat there but paul and louise have had no conversation no contact whatsoever they haven't spoken to each other so that's a bit strange isn't it in itself Yeah, let's see. Uh, what? I, I just can't get, I, we both know, I mean, we just, uh, takes a lot to get me lost for words, but I've been lost to wor for words quite often during this, um, during the these reports from this inquest. 
All right, here we go. So now on the Lancashire Post, which might not be the one you're on there, but Paul tries to contact Nicola. So call details show Paul Ansell tried to ring Nicola six times. Should be writing this down, actually. Between 10.40 and 10.47, he tried to ring uh, uh, six times and also sent a WhatsApp message. Right, so that was before before Anne-Marie Fletcher called him. Then at 10.50, so that was 10.40 to 10.47, Paul tries to ring Nicola six times and sends a WhatsApp message. At 10.50, Anne-Marie Fletcher calls St Michael's School, having found the phone but not knowing how to get hold of Paul. So Anne-Marie Fletcher knew that because of the picture on the front, she knew Nicola uh, because their children went to the same school. Because, of course, it's probably the only school in the area. I mean, it's only a tiny village, isn't it? So she rang the school to try and get some contact details. Um, oh, I think I can just change this like that. Yeah. Um, and then at 10.54... Now they're saying, now hang on, this is not what they said before. So at 10.54, a member of staff at the school calls Paul, informing on the phone that Willow has been found. That isn't what they said earlier. They said that Anne-Marie Fletcher phoned him. Oh my God, I wish they would get their timeline straight. I wish they would get their information straight and tell them there's one thing one minute they definitely said right, let me go back to that one ah sorry i've got distracted now i'm going back to um the manchester evening news because this is something isn't it the fitbit the fitbit finally we know what happened to the fitbit because that's another thing that's been banded around did they find it didn't they find it so the fit according to this the fitbit watch and mercedes car keys were recovered with her body so miss bully's fitbit watch and car keys were recovered along with her body a senior police officer who investigated her disappearance said so this is rebecca smith when she was asked what was found with her body on February the 19th, Lancashire Police Detective Superintendent Rebecca Smith told the inquest her Fitbit watch and her set of Mercedes car keys. So she obviously had the watch on, keys in her pocket, but she didn't have the phone in her pocket. Gosh, I don't envy the uh, coroner this job because it gets curiouser and curiouser doesn't it right so here we go it's saying so paul has tried to contact nicola at 10 54 so 10 50 and marie fletcher calls the school 10 54 let me go back to this one a member of staff at the school calls paul informing him the phone in that willow has been found Paul then calls Anne-Marie Fletcher at 10.57. Well, I'm not sure how he had her number, but I presume the school gave it to him. And that is where he tells her that Nikki has been struggling. So he sort of jumped to, you know, that conclusion. So why would he jump? You know, if that, surely, if that was your partner, if that was my friend, I mean, you know, it's hard to think that maybe as being a man that it happened to, but if it, if it had, even if your partner had been struggling, I think especially for a man uh, worrying about his wife or his girlfriend, if they sort of disappeared out in the campo, which is what we call it in Spain, out in the country, surely straight away you would think that god my god has somebody done something to her or maybe it's so quiet there they just never expect that um but he automatically jumped to the conclusion that it's because she's been struggling that you know it's almost like he's saying that she's done something to herself or she's possibly he's immediately put that um 
narrative out there, hasn't he? He's immediately given that as a possible, oh, well, she's been struggling. I, I just wouldn't have done that, not so not so instant later on you would if you got there then and you couldn't find them and then it all looked like that then you might say well you know she has been struggling or whatever but not initially that very first you know your initial response surely would not be that now any men in the chat you could tell me that what would you do you know if that was your partner even if they had been having problems with the menopause or the this that or the other would you straight away think that or would you and would you want to tell a stranger that yeah i don't know very strange the whole thing do we feel i mean we are further on we have got answers so the 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 answer of the Fitbit, the answer of who actually found the dog, etc. So it was Penny. So there's all this conjecture of it might be of being wrong or it might be someone else. It was Penny who found the dog. And so the 999 call, <coughs> unable to get hold of his partner, Paul Ansel calls 999 at 11am. At 11.10... Paul arrives at the bench where the others have gathered, having found Willow on the phone. Um, do you think it's strange to, to ring the police before you even go down there? Or would you go down there first, just thinking... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I do because I'm not in that situation, so... What do we think? What are we thinking in the comments? Yes, I think, it's, it's, uh, well, there you go, David, that's a man, he, he, he's, he's, oh, thank you, Huda. Uh, he, definitely, there's something, anyway, we've got to rely on the coroner to work that out. You would go there. I would go there first. As soon as that school had phoned me or whoever it was that phoned him first, I wouldn't have even phoned Angela. Uh, not Angela, sorry, Anne-Marie. As soon as the school would have phoned me and said that, I would have been there. I mean, it was only around the corner, wasn't it? I presume he's got a car as well, or don't know, or even to walk there wouldn't have taken long. But I wouldn't have even... Why did he ring um, Angela? Uh, and Marie before going there, you know, put his gym gear on and, you know, you just like, as soon as you had that phone call, well, now they're saying who did they, it was the school that phoned, but before they were saying it was Anne Marie Fletcher. So I think there's a bit of a controversy there, but to me, yeah, you'd, you'd, as soon as somebody phoned you and said, right, we found your dog here just wandering around, but we don't know where Nick looked. Uh, Nicola is first thing I would have done is I would just be straight there then you decide if you're going to phone the police if you're going to go to the gym or if you're going to do be like what do you mean what do you mean the dog's there you know be straight there wouldn't you been straight there oh right Tamar's telling me oh that's the other thing David yeah we're going to that DC Green is taking us through GPS data oh where's it gone GPS data found on Nicola's iPhone and explain, explaining the testing done on the device. The phone was intact and there was no sign it had been in the water. No, no, it's funny that, isn't it? The iPhone. And yeah, that's the other thing. They would have had to literally handcuff me to stop me. But I would have been in the river or if I couldn't actually get in it because obviously it was freezing. I would have been in there with the divers side. I would have arranged for someone to look after the girls. Um, and I would have been there searching. And I would have done that. Not only if that was my partner, but that my dog that had gone missing. You wouldn't have taken me away from there. You could tell me to go home, but I wouldn't have gone. Because I wouldn't, I couldn't have stopped. I couldn't have rested without searching everywhere. So there you go. That's, um, anyway, let's see what's going on back. Who is sharing? 
Yeah, that's the thing about the yeah, Manchester even news you're too slow. Lunch post. Yeah, and here she is. <laughs> okay, so we're back to Rebecca Smith. No indication of third party involvement. So we've had the man in black, we've had two screens, and Detective Superintendent Rebecca Smith reiterates her early witnesses by saying there is no indication of any third party involvement in Nicola's death. Trawling through CCTV and ANPR data, there were no suspicious people seen in the area at the time. So who was the man in black? Are you saying, are they saying that this guy was making it up? You know, because nobody else saw it. Was he making that up? No suspicious people seen in the area at the time except for the witness who saw the man in the uh, the man in black th uh, twice but now rebecca's saying no suspicious people were sick it's too confusing it's too confusing i can't cope with it i was there a man in black or was there not a man in black were the screams or weren't the screams so you're saying that those two people that heard screams uh, they're both wrong do, do you see is it me what what are they saying to us was there a man in black or was there not and were there screens or were there not gosh i mean what's he going to make of this the coroner i can't imagine what he's going to come up with to be honest i just don't know what conclusion he's going to come to it's got to be an open verdict but straight away now is he going to really how could he say that it was misadventure when the screams been heard by two two different witnesses and then there's been this man in black seen by another witness so how's he gonna he, just, he certainly can't give it the s uh, verdict there's just no way there it's that so you were left with the either the open verdict the misadventure or the foul play i don't think he can do like you know he's not going to find you know there's not enough evidence that somebody actually uh did do some damage to nicola then it's got to be an open verdict hasn't it that's it's got to be surely um <laughs> oh my god somebody help me out here yeah tried to phone her six times well maybe she screamed as she fell in maybe maybe but you know where exactly why was the man in black not all over the news why was the man in black not why did they not ask say that someone's been maybe they did i don't remember them doing it i don't and nobody else seemed to know about it either um you know they say we're, we're seeking to eliminate this person for our from our inquiries you know this man was seen in the area are you this man can you come forward and help us um you know help us eliminate you from the inquiries surely that's what they would do right ah tamar along with her mercedes car keys a fitbit fitbit watch was also recovered from nicholas body between 8 a.m and 9 30 it recorded 4548 steps after 9.30 a.m., no further steps were recorded. Well, that's when her phone was put on the bench, isn't it? That's when her phone was put on the bench. So surely if she went into the river, there would have, you know, they would have been... That was when her phone put on the bench. Oh, God. Now I'm thinking... There should still have been some other steps because even if it was just the steps of her falling in. Oh my goodness. I know everybody's shocked. Yeah, it seems that she was in the river, doesn't it, Silver Moon Worry? But then the thing, how was she not found? How was she not found? I, I just don't see how she could not have been found. 
Well, you know, I know the coroner is establishment, David, but he, you know, he's got a reputation to maintain, surely. Ah, I don't know, you've got to expect um, professional people to be professional, but I think he, I can't see how he's going to come up with a straightforward verdict. So it's going to be one of those narrative verdicts, whatever it is. I can't see it would just be, a, it's going to be something like, um, you know, the, the conclusion came she died of drowning and it can't be established exactly how it came to pass. That, that person, I think, unless he ends up deciding um, that it's in, um, that it was misadventure and she fell down. But I don't think it, it can be, if it can't be proven, you've got to prove it. It's got to be certain that that's what happened. Where is the certainty? And if she screamed because you know she slipped so if, if basically uh, is that what they're saying that it's possible that they heard the scream because she slipped and she screamed before she went in surely she would have screamed more than once scream more than once as so she was you know all right she might not have been able to scream for long because uh if she, oh, that's what they were trying to say earlier wasn't it that um she could have drowned within a couple of seconds of going in. I don't believe that. And I do think her her, um, her phone would have gone in as well. Well, what did Angela Fletcher say, Essex Boys Outlaw? What did Angela Fletcher say? She was tiny, but she wasn't that tiny. She had a big jacket on and so, you know. And yes, Natasha is right. Right in the beginning when um, Sally, silly Sally as I call her, as much as I think she's probably quite a nice person, she is a bit silly, but she was asked, is there any, you know, she said, oh, we think that Nicholas sadly gone in the river. And she was asked by the uh, Lancashire Live reporter, do you have any evidence, uh, you know, is there any signs that she went into the river? And she said, no. <laughs> ah, so, you know, she said, no. She said there was no proof that she'd slipped, but don't speculate. Hmm. We weren't allowed to speculate, but uh, of course the police did. Uh, do you know Silver Moon Warwick, oh, gas, I call her ghastly, but um, I shouldn't say that. It's not a nice thing to say, but uh, she should never have got involved with that CCTV because, you know, it, that that again for me is just so mysterious why you would send cctv to um a true crime channel let's see any other updates this is here no they're still on the <sighs> nope that's that oh hang on hang on hang on yeah no suspicious so our last update there is Rebecca reiterating no third party involvement, no suspicious people seen in the area, even though we've just been told about the man in black. Oh, right, let's hear from about Keith. So DC Keith Greenhalge, he's now given a presentation to the inquest as he is a digital specialist for Lancashire Police. And he's taken them through the GPS data found on Nicola's iPhone and explaining the testing that they did on the device and the phone was intact and no sign it had been in the water. And that was what Tamar just uh, read out to me. Thank you for that. Let's see what Mark's got to say. Oh, yeah, we've got a little update here on the Manchester Evening News. Uh... The Fitbit watch stopped recording steps beyond 9.30 a.m. So that's what they're saying is that 9.30 a.m. You know, that's when Nicola was no more, I suppose. So uh, Miss Bully's Fitbit watch stopped recording steps beyond 9.30 a.m. on the day she disappeared. 
a digital specialist for Lancashire Police said. Nicola Bully's iPhone was recovered from a bench. The phone was intact and there was no sign it had been in the water and there were no further steps recorded beyond 9.30. Oh, gosh. It's like, you, you just just wish, don't you, that someone could, that um, Willow could speak to us. Because Willow will know exactly what happened one way or the other. Bless her. Oh, water shut. What's this? Right, so, yeah, according to Mark Williams, uh, Thomas, the superintendent, uh, Rebecca, was asked by the coroner if there was any third party involvement. Cate the answer was categorically no. Uh, 0901 Nikki dialed into Teams call, nobody heard anything, call was muted, ended 9.30, Nikki remained logged in. When Nikki's body was recovered, on the body was the Mercedes car keys, Fitbit watch, Nikki did not have headphones, which that's a surprise isn't it, because obviously in many of the photos we've seen of Nikki, uh, when she was training and everything, uh, uh, she did have headphones, but there were no headphones. Uh, 0922 was her highest heart rate. So at 22, past, uh, 22 minutes past nine, that was her highest heart rate. Is that the last one? Oh, uh, Fitbit Versa 4 on wrist, lost power on the fourth. Oh. Oh, so the power went from the Fitbit what? on the 4th of February. So, so that's a little while after supposedly she went into the water. So it must have lasted the power. Are they waterproof? A lot of Fitbits, I suppose they're waterproof, are they? So it lost power on the 4th of February, 27th of January. Between 8 and 9.30 shows 4,548 steps, but nothing after 9.30. Hmm. Oh, so the Fitbit carried on. Um, you know, this is another thing that's annoying me a bit, really, because um, they made a big thing, didn't they, in the beginning? That the Fitbit had not been synced, and I didn't even know what that meant. What did it mean that the Fitbit had not been synced? That meant they couldn't get the cloud information, so they've only been able to do this because they've actually now recovered the Fitbit. Well, I don't know. I don't know what the sync syncing means as far as, uh, for, you know, unfortunately, I don't have a Fitbit. I could do with getting one, I think. Uh, <laughs> Um, right, I think this might be, where are we, what time are we on now? So it's five o'clock, he's probably the last witness of the day. I do find this annoying when they keep saying, I don't see how they can say no indication of third party involvement when two screams are heard and there's a man in black, some, all of a sudden this man in black has uh, turned up, you know, or started to be talked about. Are they going to find that it was an accident? They can't, surely, they can't prove it's an accident. I just don't believe, I don't believe she slipped in there. She walked there, they, she, she knew to stay away from the side. Stop it. Stop. Stop. Yeah, I think they've got to... Um, are they going to... Or are they never going to mention the fact that the body was never found? <laughs> you know, all those searches and all those... 
you know they're just going to sort of sweep that under the carpet now and say oh well yeah the body was never found we're not really incompetent because i'll tell you what if they're if what they're saying is that she was in the water all that time uh but they and i haven't mentioned that have you was a the 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 condition of her body was it consistent with being in the water all that time i mean I 